host to the Pockets. I'm Ben, as always, I'm joined by Kaz. Hello. And Mike. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about the Black Knight Satellite. Mm. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> the knight wants to be black, he can be paint his armour oh, I don't kind. think you'll find it's the ethnic knight. Satellite. Oh. It's, oh, the, it's knight. the satellite of colour. Oh. It's not, we're getting more racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's the BAME knight. The BAME. The what? Black and minority ethnic. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mike, you're so woke. Hey. You're okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm there with the kids. <laughs> I'm down with the kids. <laughs> Anybody who says they're down with the kids. <laughs> it's not. It's one of them. It's like that person who, I'm mad, me. Yeah. Oh, I'm wild. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off, Jonathan. <laughs> Your <laughs> mum's calling it. <laughs> yeah. I've just got visions of Mike like, turning up to a house party you know, with his baseball hat on backwards. Uh, and a wacky tie. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I'm mad, me. <laughs> Hi, kids. Got the avocado on toast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, fellow teenagers. <laughs> What's your chosen pronouns? <laughs> <laughs> Lip biscuit there, dope. <laughs> <laughs> All this mixtape. <laughs> 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 <That's a tape. laughs> oh man. Burn with the steak. <laughs> Witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Grandad. <laughs> uh, but first, mm. we'll go through some of our top listeners and then we'll do some weird news. Let's start off with the mince. Usually takes, oh sorry to cut you, but usually takes about half an hour. Yeah, it? yeah. So don't skip on, stick with us for the news. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Minsk, Belarusia, Paris, wow. Glasgow, it's just only like Scottish listeners now, it's weird. Wolverhampton, Porto Alegro, Brazil, Irving, Texas, Warwick in the United Kingdom, Markham in Canada, Quickborn in Germany. Watertown, MA. Surfers Paradise. Wow, mm. Australia. Cincinnati, Ohio. Dublin, Ireland. Wow, Argentina's crept into the top ten. La Plata. Yeah. London. Woodstock. The Bronx. Ooh. Love it. We're big in the Bronx. Mm. Shady Nasty, New York. Gotta listen top. to this podcast. <laughs> These fucking English guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They might talk like that in the Bronx. <laughs> I don't know. They probably do. No. <laughs> uh, Little Rock, Benton, and Porto Gaville. Hey. And Leeds in the top five. But yeah. Excellent. I actually, from listening to podcasts, the Bronx is one of those areas that used to be like, you know, really rough. Yeah. Like mega, mega rough, but has now been sort of gentrified and is uber trendy. Ah. And kind of. You know, poor local people have been yeah. pushed out, and now it's like you know, coffee houses and like, like yeah. early been converted warehouses. Yeah, like that. you know, hot yoga classes and you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's all like that though, because Ortez, Casio Ortez, is it? Is he a fighter? She. She. Oh, sorry. Alexandria, what's her name? AOC. That's it. Oh, her, oh I'm thinking of the UFC. She's sorry. in the Bronx. Mm. Which oh. happened in London too. Areas that were shitholes are now. Like top end prices and stuff like yeah. that. That's just what gentrification is, isn't it? Just people think property gets cheap, so people kind of move in, don't they, and start raising the air. But the downside of that is local people get sort of shoved out, don't they? But That's it, they have moved on. They should have better jobs, shouldn't they, Mike? I'm getting started. I'm joking. We're not going. We're not doing economics. Don't start him on post-capitalist modern luxury capitalism, <laughs> communism. For God's sake. Oh, good luck to him. Anyway, thanks, listeners. Thank you very really, much. Really, truly appreciate it. And okay. my missus sat in on a recording the other week, which she's never done before, and we discussed numbers, and she was genuinely quite impressed, boys. So yeah. she thinks we're cool. She doesn't. No, say, <laughs> <I> do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, cheers, guys. Indeed. So let's do weird news. Let's do it. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. Navy pilot says dark mass made torpedo disappear. Mm. If it wasn't a submarine, what the hell was it? 
You might know, not know the name David Fravor, but you probably know what he saw, even if he's not sure himself what it was. Fravor is the retired US Navy commander who in 2017 told the New York Times that he spotted the tic-tac-shaped UFO from the cockpit of his F-18 Super Hornet. There's a video, of course, and it's the you now legendary encounter at least the public, for public viewing. Yes, and he's just done a podcast with um, Joe Rogan, hasn't he? Yeah. That was a good one. Very good. Yes, do you want to scroll down? He recalls a sighting from 15 years ago and also received a new story from a Navy helicopter pilot who reached out with his own strange, creepy tower on the job. Back in the 90s, this pilot's job was to fetch BQM aerial target drones and submarine telemetry torpedoes from the ocean. At the time, the pilot was flying a, 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 a helicopter, a CH-53, and they do, they do a lot of shooting off the coast of Puerto Rico. He was practised up. The helicopter drops a swimmer in the water and he hooks the things up and they just fly it back. First time they were out and they were going to pick up a BQM, he's sitting in the front of the helicopter. You can see down by your feet. 50 feet, 15 metres above the water and he sees this kind of dark mass coming up from the depths. As the pilot picked up the BQM, he was apparently at a loss for words. He's looking at this thinking, well, what the hell is that? And then he just goes back down underwater. Once they pull the kid and this BQM out of the water, this object descends back into the depths. One dark mass coming up from the depths is weird enough. Two is officially cause of concern. A few months later, the helicopter pilot saw the exact same thing. He's out picking up a torpedo. They hook the diver up on the winch, and as it's lowering him down, he sees this big mass. He goes, it's not a submarine. He's seen submarines before. Once you've seen a submarine, you can't confuse it with anything else. This big object, kind of circular, is coming up from the depths, and he starts screaming through the intercom system to tell them to pull the diver up and the diver's only a few feet from the water. They reverse the winch and the diver's thinking what the hell is going on and all of a sudden he said the torpedo just got sucked down underwater and the object just descended back down into the depths. They never recovered wow. it. Leviathan. Giant squid. Mm, some kind of sea creature. Kraken. Could be. I'm just trying to think of practical non-UFO explanations. Very unlikely, though. Gas it? pocket? I've heard of them. Doesn't that explain ships? Uh, yeah. Some people think it explains ships mm -hmm. disappearing. Yeah, Bermuda Triangle style. Or it's fucking... Atlantis? Atlantis. <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? Jesus no. Christ. Have you watched Aquaman? No, I haven't. Actually. Surprisingly fucking good movie. Yeah? It makes it, Atlantis seem like really fucking cool, like high end tech but underwater, you know, like a big yeah. city and like it's fucking awesome. So if there was something like that, if they're like, hey, that torpedo's a little, um, you know, we don't know what that is, like fuck off with that. Yeah, we'll send our mermen up in their big drone mm -hmm. thing together. Yeah, but they've got like better tech than us, it just, it's at the bottom uh -huh. of the sea, it's like more futuristic than ours. Yeah. I don't know, what's your best? What's your money on if you had to? Gun to the head. Well, I just if I were guns to my head, I'm gonna say whatever they want me to say. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphoric. <laughs> well, that's aliens, isn't it? Fair enough, Mike. I don't know, mate. I can't. I can't say. I haven't, I haven't got enough evidence to. Well, that's saying that this did actually happen. We're going. Yeah, this is a second. That's what I mean. Story. It's just a mm, it's hearsay. It's an anecdote, isn't it? But it's pretty scary. This, I'm scared of the sea anyway. Deep. Mm. Deep, deep ocean terrifies me. It's shit coming up from it that's not identifiable, just a mass. They keep saying mass, they don't use a shape, do they? Yeah, so it's it was vaguely square, circular. It was, oh, vaguely circular. A mass. A vaguely circular, giant basking shark's mouth, giant <laughs> creature. <laughs> Jaws. Thing. Yeah, but it's so far down, I don't know, it's creating a. I don't know. Fuck. Could be a giant squid. I don't know. Maybe that torpedo got mated with by a giant squid. <laughs> the other thing is, haven't we explored more of like like we i don't know the exact number but it's a poxy little percentage of the ocean two percent two percent wow so they come on we don't we haven't got a fuck it might be yeah. fuck all to do with aliens there's shit down mm. there that we haven't seen won't see atlantis yeah uh, secret underwater ufo bases the thing I don't get with the Atlanteans, though, they probably explain it away in Aquaman. I do think there's some sort of shield that you go through, like a bloop, 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 once yeah. you get down there. Because, like, how does the pressure of the water not... But animals, there are animals that survive that far down, aren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. So their physiology must mm -hmm. be designed in a way to deal with the pressure yeah. of the water, or that water on top of them. So I if they've got gills, they'll be fine. 
I've never no, but I'm talking about, isn't it like, isn't the weight, the pressure of the water yeah, enough no. to crush you if you what, go you far think, enough down? It depends what you're in, isn't it? If you're in a, they can get submersibles now that can withstand mm. the pressure. But I mean, if they, right, let's imagine there was some way of like transporting your body to the bottom of the ocean, like, like Star Trek style, beamed you down, and then it's, you just appeared in the water on the bottom. You would just be crushed with oh God, yeah. instantly. But yeah, you know, like, yeah, you've got like. So I'm saying yeah, Atlanteans if it, if it, must have some. If kind they've of, got gills like fish, then they can yeah. withstand the pressures, can't they? Oh, is that how it works? I think. I don't know. I was, I was breathing. I'm not a biologist. I don't know for sure. I'm but so I far out of my depth. Hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you watch the boys, boy, well, it's not a spoiler, but there's there's a, an Aquaman style character. And it's gross, but it's like, yeah, of course he would have to. So he's basically got the same powers as Aquaman. He can dive right to the bottom and like, he's this handsome dude and all that. But then he takes off his top and his stomach all here is these like horrible, like opening up gill things. Like, oh. and like this woman, like is obsessed with him. Like she's trying to shag him and she wants to stick her hands in the gills no. and he's like fuck off it's like it fucking hurts and she's like trying to violate him <laughs> but yeah so I guess Atlanteans would have to wouldn't they yeah but Aquaman has his shirt off you don't yeah he ain't got gills but I don't know how do they explain it in DC like how does he breathe down the magic probably superpowers superpowers but see someone needs to explain this to me then because I, I like the idea of Atlantis being there but whether or not I think it's still populated by like because isn't it like Nordics and Aryans or something. I they, they had were a different powers. race. They had powers, but then it got sunk. But then, so what happened? Did some of them survive? They must have had to evolve to have gills and things. Or they've got this force field thing like Aquaman. I don't know. No, I'm, a clue. I'm just spitballing. I think they're probably dead. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're the science so that's probably true. Well, either way, this is fucking pretty interesting and cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And scary. Well, you know, US uh, Navy are seeing a lot of, and the Air Force are seeing mm-hmm. a lot of stuff in the sky and the seas, obviously. Daily, isn't it? Daily. The question is, are the sightings ramping up, or is the reporting of the sightings ramping up? Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Like, has this just always been this frequent? It's just they didn't let the stories get through. But I think old Mr. Blink-182, who we like to rip the piss out of so much, him and his mad company might have actually done a favour to the world by kind of forcing the military's hand by releasing shit. Do you know what I mean? They've yeah. been releasing stuff when... There was, shouldn't have been released. Yeah, and so it's kind of forced the military to go, yep, yeah, that is a that is one of our videos, and yep, yeah, no, we don't know what it is. It's a, they don't call it a UFO, no. What it's an like, identified aerial phenomenon. That's the one. Which is, What's the abbreviation for that? No? UAP. That's not as cool, is it? Nah. No, we're near as cool. UAP, man. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. They're aliens. Aliens. Or big squids. Possibly. Not in the sky. Or six foot underwater owls. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. We know what the Kelly Hopkins villain game to was. Owls. It was not owls. Right. Next one. Mm-hmm. Fashion designer launches line of school shooting themed bullet hole riddled hoodies. Uh, Oof. That was and a there's mistake. a picture of two people in these hoodies. One says oh, Colin no. and the other one says Sandy Hook. Oh, it literally. <laughs> oh my god. And they have bullet holes. They have holes in your hoodie. Oh. Dystopian themed fashion house Bistroy, founded by designers Brick Owens and Dieter Dugrams. And a hot new line of um, uh, bullet riddled shoot school shooting hoodies. Be the hottest looking person. Put on a uh, put mm. on a watch list this fall when you walk <laughs> around your neighbourhood rocking their navy and white Columbine hoodie, dressed to look as if a kid had been murdered while wearing it, and you'll never look more fabulous than you will when wearing uh, and being rightfully viciously beaten for wearing their <laughs> green bullet hole covered Sandy Hook hoodie. Oh, they were first graders at Sandy Hook. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, well, that's a bit weird. That's, that's... I would say that's a misstep. Um, yeah. <laughs> that design company's probably, this is going to backfire on them, mm. I would say, massively. Yeah. And so sadly, those two models as well, probably. Yeah. I'm it. sure Info Wars will buy it. I mean, I'm... <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, no, he won't because he doesn't think that Sandy Hook happened, does he? Ah uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no. Officially, legally, then I think you'll find mm. he does think. Mm. It oh, happened. does it have? Does he think yeah. legally and yeah. officially speaking, 
for the sake of the courts. <laughs> <laughs> He's been, I think, informed by his lawyers that he definitely thinks Sandy Hook was real. <laughs> and oh, he yeah. must tell everyone that he was a little bit confused before. Yeah. Or he I might never see, his, would never see his children again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think even sad, this is just sad, but I think even sadder than this, have you heard of the range? It's not fashion related, but in America you can buy bulletproof Backpacks. Um, backpacks yeah, yeah I saw children. that. What kind of a world is that, huh? Fucking hell, America. Sort it out. There's loads yeah. of awesome stuff that you do. Pro wrestling. Most of your music's pretty good. Not most of it, a lot of it. Your movies. It's just the gun thing, you know? It's just the old kids shooting each other to death with machine guns. It's a bit... Somebody should do something about that, shouldn't they? No, you just buy the backpack. Oh, all right, and everything will be okay? Yeah. Okay. As long as they're running, as long as they're wearing it the way they're getting shot. Obviously, I mean, if they're running away, they're all right. If they're face on, then no, they're not gonna be all right. Kevlar hoodies, Kevlar yeah. dunces caps. Yeah, this fashion house isn't gonna last long. You fucked up, boys, and yeah. you probably put a lot of money into this, or or maybe not a lot, but yeah. Oh, how did they ever think this was gonna be? I know, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just so I'm in shock. At the, uh, imagine the planning committee. Imagine the planning meeting. Like, uh, oh, we want to do something a bit controversial. We want you. Know, uh, how about school shooting hoodies? We'll put some holes in them. We'll put the names on the front, and you're like, and someone went, yeah, that's a good idea. Someone said, yeah. that's a good idea. Let's do that. <laughs> or even more tragically, in a way, they actually thought that this was some sort of social statement. Well, they thought they could get away with saying... They're, they're trying to make money, that's all anyone selling in is trying to do. But maybe they thought they could get away with, hey, we're making a statement, you know, about how, how tragic the state of school shootings are in America. No, you're trying to whip up some controversy and sell some hoodies based on the deaths of, like... And quite rightly, as it says in the article, I don't condone violence at all, but if you're going to be wearing one of them in public, you're going to expect somebody to get very upset with you. Absolutely. Somewhere. I mean, you might get away with walking around one in a festival in the UK. People don't realise what it says, mm. maybe. But as soon as somebody puts two and two together, man, get ready for an awkward oh, yeah. conversation. And if you're wearing that somewhere in the States, I'd, I'd imagine someone's going to fucking slap you. Or shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> the irony. <laughs> oh, the irony. Gun down for wearing your Sandy Hook fucking hoodie. And for the listener, to paint... Yeah, you, literally, that's, that is... It's a... Bullet ridden fucking hoodie with the Sandy Hook logo on the front. Come on. I mean, it, there's no way, there's nothing about that is like edgy or like, no, it you just, know, it's it's just really fucking distasteful and it doesn't say anything or prove anything or achieve anything. It really doesn't. Even the models don't look happy. I mean, I know everyone in those in the creative industry has got to take whatever jobs they can get in the early days and that, but yeah, this model, is it the same guy? I don't know. Uh, Different guys. Yeah, you should have maybe. And what are we talking about then, models? What's a columbine? <laughs> don't worry about it, put the fucking hoodie on and just stand Hey, there. this hoodie's got a hole in it. Hey, 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 model, breathe in. That's what you do after breathing out. Thought about this. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> or you'll die, right, okay. Put the hoodie on and look pretty. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying models are thick. And this fucking... Oh. All right, next one. <laughs> Cunts. Oh. Right. First of all, let's uh, double check. Are we saying Amish or Amish? Amish. Amish. Amish, Amish, Amish. Amish. Amish paradise, that's it. Yeah. Cops pull over two men on an Amish buggy drinking spiked iced tea. Nice. It looks like Drumble County's Amish... Count, uh, country should keep an eye on their residents a little bit better. Authorities are currently trying to find two men who basically took off running when they were pulled over for drink and driving. In a buggy. Yes, a buggy. According to police reports, a sheriff's deputy was on patrol in North Bloomfield when he saw two Amish men drinking spiked iced tea. What spiked iced tea? Did they spike it themselves? or? How did he know it was spiked? Uh, they're not supposed to drink, are they? No, no. no. So he conducted a routine stop. He then noticed that on top of the buggy there was a case of beer. Uh. As far as beer type, apparently it was a 12 pack of Michelob Ultra. So classy. I've heard of it. No. I imagine, as it says so classy, mm. I would imagine in the States then that that's a pretty low end. Mm. 
Like a, yeah. they had a twelve pack of white lightning or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know this the song I'm sure we talked about this before, but Night Train, Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Is about like a strong cheap wine called Night Train. It's like the it's basically like us writing a song called White Lightning, mm. basically. I'm on the white lightning. <laughs> I want some night train. So one of our American listeners send us. I don't know what the laws are on sending alcohol from America. You could probably get a life sentence <laughs> or executed. But yes, yeah, send us a bottle of night train. I'd like to try some Michelin Ultra Lager as well. Well, if it's good enough for the Amish. It's good enough for me. Yeah, that's it. Wait, but that's not all then. No. This wasn't just your regular buggy. It was tripped out with a full-on giant stereo system and large speakers. Yes, Amish, with a style. I'm sorry, this has got to be satire, hasn't it? <laughs> Where's it from? Rare.us. Although buggies aren't really around anymore, police stated that the horse and the buggy are considered a vehicle, which means that, yes, impaired driving laws do apply. Basically, you're not allowed to drink and drive or operate a buggy if you've had one too many beers. Sorry, y'all. That's how it's written. <laughs> <laughs> I've suddenly gone all... Yeah. Well, yeah, basically, they did a runner, they got pulled over and they legged it. Yeah, and they left the horse. How did they get off with the buggy then if they left the horse? <laughs> they just ran. Oh! I I the, police, they were like, the police Shh. pulled him over. Oh, I thought it was like. They didn't unhook police. the buggy and then carry it on themselves. <laughs> so I thought they, like, yeah, it was like a horse chase. I thought they yeah. they left on the buggy, but no. They no, just, no, they just ran they into ran some woods. Foot, barefoot, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Probably put it on fucking Nike Airs. They got a stereo system and a 12 pack of lager. I thought Amish people were supposed to resist all technology. Yeah. And alcohol and that yeah. sort of shiz. But they're allowed when they're younger. There's a period yeah. of time, isn't it? Some special. You go out and sort of like for a couple of years or so yeah. a year. Go and stay there while they're outside. Well, yeah. Get it out of your system basically then come back. Yeah. Which well, I imagine would you, would you want to go back? Yeah, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Just don't come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It has been known to happen. Uh, I could imagine. Would you want to go back? You know, I you have know. two years having a know, man. You're watching TV. At that age, no. At my age now, I, I wouldn't mind it. I was going to say that. <laughs> you, you, get up, get you couldn't get up at fucking dawn and go uh, milk a uh, cow. Uh, you uh, can't yeah, get up before two o'clock. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like to be in the country, that's all. <laughs> you just want an excuse to have a beard. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of it, let's say. Living off the land time before technology you know you haven't got facebook bringing you down although they probably have they find ways around it like mormons is it mormons or some jewish people well they've got newspapers think, like still but you know where it's stuff like you're not supposed to use technology on a sunday mm. it might be jewish the one Sabbath. of the jewish faces yeah, it's one of the but there's this weird yeah. but you get ways around it where you get your mate to turn the telly on for you yeah so you haven't touched uh. it you know what I mean? All your lights go on to timers. Yeah, no, that's the sort of point then. Yeah. I know, you're cheating, you're trying to game God. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's like. <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's I do everything right. Do you believe no, in it or not, mate? He's not present, he sees everything. <laughs> you think he isn't going to know about you asking your neighbour to turn yeah. it on for you and then you watch the football? <laughs> I didn't touch it, no God. I'm gonna start using that as an excuse on the weekend. I can't change a channel on Sabbath. If you go to someone's house, I can't change a channel. Uh, you have to do it. Oh man. Well, I'm gonna say that these weren't real, true Amish people. I suspect that if this isn't satire, I think it is. We have had articles in there that hasn't been, even though it's so ridiculous. But I'm gonna guess that these guys were not Amish and had probably stolen this guy's buggy. <laughs> and put a stereo oh, on Oh, let's be laugh. honest, man. In modern day, if you're a young Amish lad, we really think that the young lads are not sneaking off into town for beers and fucking mm. weed and limes mm. and hookers, probably. <laughs> like, mm. they must be. They just got bust. That's why they legged it. They're like, we're not going to be in that much trouble with the law, but we, we're more worried about what our fucking village is going to say. Yeah. Leg it! We'll be shunned in the eyes <laughs> of the community. Do they wear clogs? No. no. It's a touch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just imagine people legging it in clubs. <laughs> Take your fucking clogs off, lad! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Dad! <laughs> On that note, who the fuck designed it? Exactly, you thought, I know, let's make some shoes out of wood. <laughs> At what point do you think that's a good if idea? If you fall over, it's going to splinter into your foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. 
I'd rather walk around with like a mm. couple of fucking sacks on yeah. my feet. But you could probably fling them off into some in self defence. Yeah, really yeah. easily. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Jackie Chan has in one of his films at some point flung a clug in someone's face. <laughs> He's used everything else. <laughs> it's true, actually. Yeah, yeah. Dutch ninjas <laughs> <laughs> in clogs. Yeah, didn't you say? Didn't you ever see that legendary Jackie Chan film, Dutch Ninja? Had <laughs> <laughs> to rescue that boy who had his finger in a dike. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> Did you see the video of the giant angry Dutchman forcing his way into the burger? There was like a no. protesters, climate protesters, or whatever, blocking off the burger chain. And I couldn't see the. I don't think it was a McDonald's, it was just a burger restaurant that happened to be in the wherever they were protesting. And this giant Dutchman, very politely, sort of. You can tell, you can't understand me, so sort of like, can I, you know, go through? And they're like, no. And he's like, okay. Just fucking forces his way through. Doesn't hit anybody, he's just yeah. huge. And they're not, they're small, <laughs> they're vegans. And they're like... And they somebody have the strength to stop him. <laughs> but somebody, and it's their own fault, these protesters have got it wrong, man. They, somebody turns around and grabs onto his arm as if to like, no, you can't fucking go in there. Nobody's got any right to do that to anybody, no. right? And this guy just turns around and starts fucking screaming in Dutch. And like all these like hippies are just like shit, just frozen to the spot, like not no one's making eye contact with him. And the one thing he says in English that made him like fucking hippie ah <laughs> <laughs> But I agree with their right to do whatever they're doing, but the second they start physically Grabbing, grabbing people to stop them going in to buy a burger then you've got it they were all very lucky I think that he did show some restraint Ain't no one getting between me and a burger that's what right. I thought why would anyone try and stop a man that size who clearly just wanted a burger like I would have just gone yeah go on please keys between the knuckles got windmill in it <laughs> oh man bless him they got the right idea but you could yeah you got to pick your targets like <laughs> no just well don't stop people from doing like their business what they're allowed to do really yeah. like just move the, i get what they're saying but is stopping that man from going about his legally rightful business getting a burger is that going to really achieve anything in the grand scheme of well, no, it saving? no and it makes people who are not sympathetic to your cause think oh fuck you like who do you think you are yeah, like yeah. but yeah dutch people they're funny when they swear <laughs> <laughs> don't stop them trying to get burgers no Never get between a man and his burger. Fucking hippie, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that was the news. So, let's talk about the Black Knight satellite. Mm. The Black Knight satellite theory claims there is a spacecraft in near polar orbit of the Earth that is a, of extraterrestrial origin and that NASA is engaged in a cover-up regarding its existence and Origins. Never a straight answer. Oh, I was waiting for someone to say <laughs> that answer. Waiting for it. Reptilian crumbs. <laughs> it's not a reptilian tongue coming down. Yes, it's it fucking twin trails. is. It's blatant. It's, it's quite tw- serpenty. <laughs> it is blatant. I'm sorry. It's a bit of a serpenty motif. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. In 1901, Tesla published an article in Collier's Weekly detailing his experiments with electrical currents. So tell you what he was trying to do? He was trying to do the free electricity thing, wasn't he? With well, he, tower. Was, it, he was working on a magnifying transmitter at Colorado Springs to investigate wireless distribution of electricity. Yeah, because he got back to work, didn't he? He did, yeah. We could all be living on free, free power, but where's the money to be made in that? They suppressed it. J.P. Morgan uh, was funding Tesla. He shut the funding out when he found out it worked. They sabotaged him like fuck, didn't they? They tried to Mm. make him go insane. He did go insane, didn't he? Edison nicked half his fucking ideas. He nicked a good one, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did, to be fair. Him and Edison actually had a big fallout because Edison was like, oh, I've got this fucking circuit board over here. No one can get it to fucking work. You do it. I'll give you $100 on the spot. He did it. Yeah. And he's like, I'm not paying you. What a kind of... <laughs> yeah, I was just a joke, I'm not paying you. Do you know when the Simpsons were home and invents that leaning back chair? Mm. <laughs> Find out that Edison invented it 100 years before. Yeah, and the electric <laughs> hammer. Yeah. 
<laughs> you made it, and then it's like, oh, it's Edison stole Homer's invention, it would have right. made him millions. Again, <laughs> with the Simpsons, it's the whole flaming Homer, isn't it? Yeah. Flaming Mo. Homer always gets shafted, man. Yeah. Oh, what a guy. But he gets to sleep with Marge, and we've all seen how fit she is when she goes in the bath and her hair goes down. Mm. Woo! Marge Simpson. Love, yeah. love her. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Anyway. And uh, Flanders wife ain't bad either. Oh, yeah, before she died. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Battered to death by t-shirts. <laughs> Stupid sexy Flanders. <laughs> ah, That's one of my favourite yeah, moments. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Ski <laughs> 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 suits are revealing. <laughs> yeah. Stupid sexy Flanders. <laughs> I do love it that Flanders is secretly ripped no one to the joke. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like sixty something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's just to wind Homer up even more, isn't it? Yeah. That's what you could do, Homer, if you actually ate right and exercise. Yeah. <laughs> Homer's a legend. Yeah. Working class hero, mate. He is. I fully agree. Tesla claims he experienced unexplained disturbances in electrical signals and concludes that the source may have been extraterrestrials yes, trying to communicate. The strange signals were repeated periodically in timed... It looks like I've wrote pubes, but it's... <laughs> yeah! Pulses. Pulses. <laughs> I'm going to guess. For the listener, Ben cannot see my <laughs> notes. He's just literally guessed. Well, what it is, is I, I know what he... They reckon he might have picked up uh, signals from pulsars. Right. Which uh, are spinning neutron stars that emit radio waves. That's true, Oh, yeah. I know the ones. Yeah, them. <laughs> but it's also worth pointing out, Tesla did kind of pioneer radio. And would he have made a mistake? Then again, what he wasn't aware of the existence of pulsars. So, right. Can't but still, it. technically speaking, signals coming from space, isn't it? Even if the signal's yeah. a signature that's coming off of a, a oh, natural yes. phenomenon like a star. He was right in that respect. He was extraterrestrial then. Yeah. Yeah. Good man. Tesla said, It was some time afterwards when the thought flashed upon my mind the disturbances I had obs observed might be due to an intelligent control. Although I could not decipher their meaning, it was impossible for me to think of them as having been entirely accidental. The feeling is constantly growing on me that I have been the first to hear the greeting of one planet to another. Mm. And then we have another guy, a Norwegian chap. In 1927, amateur radio operator Jorgen Hals discovered long-delayed echoes, LDEs, which are echoes of shortwave transmissions. He couldn't figure out what was causing the, uh, the LDEs, and neither did anyone else, and scientists still don't know what causes them. One theory is that these are the echoes of the same signals Tesla heard, and they were coming from intelligent beings in space. Okay, I've got something on long distance echoes. The five hypotheses. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so it could be ducting in the Earth's magnetosphere and ionosphere at low HF frequencies. Yeah, makes perfect sense. I'm aware of these. Okay, it could be radio waves that, that travel many times around the world. Makes sense. Yeah. That's Chester, the show cat. Nice. Can you hear him? You might be able to hear him. You probably can. <laughs> Mode conversion, signals coupled to plasma waves in the upper ionosphere. Reflection from distant plasma clouds coming originally from the sun. Or non-linearity in addition to mode conversion. Two transmitted signals combine to generate a different frequency which then travels with a plasma wave and then is converted back. I'm just Apparently, thinking. they're the scientific possible explanation for LDEs. I just think the plasma wave sounds fucking cool. <laughs> no, right, that plasma wave. There you go, Mike. Plasma wave, it also sounds a little quite sort of Star Trek-y. Yeah. Or something. yeah. Did you see the Picard trailer? I did. I saw it was from the first one. I don't think it was oh, the, the second, second one. Oh, the second one made me very quick tangent, I promise, but I, I felt strangely emotional because... The last Star Trek I ever really gave a fuck about was The Next Generation, and I really gave a fuck about that, but mm. I completely fell out of Star Trek after that. A little bit of Deep Space Nine, but not much. The, anyway. the new films aren't bad, the young kids. Yeah, I've seen some of the... Oh, no, I haven't seen the newest new... I've no, seen the that Next one's Generation so good, films. But the, um, the new, the new one. the first new new one. Yeah, that's all right. And yeah, the second one's all right, too. Like yeah. the original Spock's in it. Yeah. Anyway, this new Picard trailer. Spoilers, if you haven't seen it, but... You see somebody stood at a sink washing up right at the end of the trailer and like he's shouting at his kids or whatever and they're like, Dad, Jean-Luc Picard's here. And you see the person going, what? It's Riker. No way. And um, 
It was you know, Riker's got a bit fucking ten kids. Strangely emotional, man. I, was like, I think it's. I think he's married to Troy, Deanna Troy. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, check it out later on. All right, it yeah. looks good, man. Yeah. But Kirk's still a better captain. He's not the better captain. Me and Mike had this discussion again the other night. <laughs> Without me! Yes, <laughs> and we both agreed that Picard is a yeah. superior captain. But, as I always say, who would you rather be caught in a bar fight on a Martian moon with? We always say you wouldn't be caught in a bar fight with Picard. That's it. Because he'd talk his way out, yeah, he'd talk it all down. No, because you'd be, Kirk, you'd you'd be watching some fucking some stupid <laughs> space opera. Like, drinking fucking tea. Kirk could just smash a bottle of a small red screen. Come on! <laughs> <I know. laughs> Alright, in my 20s I'd want to be with Kirk. Yeah. Now, maybe you're right, I'd rather drink tea and with Picard. Let's face it, we'd be red shirts. Oh, fuck oh, yeah. Not the lowest ranks on the, the ship. the king of the red shirts. <laughs> we'd be sent <laughs> down on suicide missions with Kirk, with Picard, he never lost a red shirt. <laughs> but he was a Borg one time. That never happened to Kirk. Oh yeah, because Kirk never met the Borg. Because he was too busy dying. No, he was... <laughs> he wasn't anyway, alive at that point. Anyway, Kirk's the, the best captain. He's not. He's got the best hair. Of the two. Of <laughs> oh, the two, yeah, but you'd argue that... <laughs> I won! I won! You'd argue yes. that um, Riker's hair and beard is ma- outmatches We're anything Kirk's got. We're not comparing first mates, though, are we? It was the first one on the Enterprise with Kirk. Was it Spock? Oh, it must have been Spock, next in command. I'll tell you what, I'd like Picard as captain as Kirk as security. As number one. Oh, head of... Se- no, maybe Kirk is his number one. Maybe. Or head of security. Because Worf's a pretty good head of security. No, he's not. He loses every fight he ever has. He's a king gun, man. He's yeah, but he still gets his ass kicked all the time. Uh, it could have made him cooler, I suppose. Anyway. Yeah. Data could probably beat him in a fight. Oh, yeah, because Data's got that ruthless machine logic, hasn't he? Well, Android strength as well. Isn't yeah, it? and Android strength. Yeah. It's weird, like Data. Hey, data head of security. Well, uh, data. Get in another the... date. Do you want to have him as head of security? <laughs> data, father of Greta Thunberg, famously. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's in the new trailer, and like, it's really sad because no amount of contact lenses and makeup can, can cover the fact that the man who plays Prince Data. Prince Spiders. Yeah, aged really, horribly. <laughs> he's sort of aged this way. <laughs> so as fat most data. people do. Kish. What's his fat data? Fat her data. <laughs> Awesome policy fat date. That's what the kids say. I've got a fat data plan, man. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, another theory that what this could be mm-hmm. is a Bracewell probe. A Bracewell probe? What's mm. a Bracewell probe? Well. Go on, Mike. Something on that. It's a hypothetical concept for an autonomous interstellar space probe dispatched for the express purpose of communication with one or more alien civilizations. It was proposed by Ronald N. Bracewell in a 1960 paper as an alternative to interstellar radio communication between widely separated civilizations. Okay. So it's an alien greeting probe. Yeah. Like on a mover, maybe? Mm. And that hurtled yeah. through. Oh, but it's a man made alien greeting probe, though. We sent it no, up it's, there. It's an alien made, I think. Oh. Yeah. It's been hovering around the planet. Right. Sending radio yeah. signals that we didn't couldn't pick up until the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, and then obviously the authorities got in and said, "Oh no, we're not having that. Can't tell the people about that mm. because they think that the first thing we'd see from alien civilization is its AI, its AI drones and scouting, and that's, so that's, what, that's, that's what the transformers do. That's what most people in comic books do. Send out the send in the scout. First thing they'll find is probably Voyager one. Oh, yeah. yeah, aliens will find that. Yeah. Well, that's that's the plot of Star Trek: mm. The Motion Picture, isn't it? It was. That's a boring film. Mm. Don't it's wrath of Khan. Good story though. It's the very first Star Trek yeah, ever. They movie. all blur into one for it's me. It's very slow. It's like an extended television episode, basically. There's no big action sequences really or anything. It's like it's. I found it to be quite cerebral and dragging. I like the story though. Yeah, it's good. It's basically, Voyager One's been found by alien life hasn't it and fucking but it's, it's no, turned into that woman hasn't it hasn't it gained sort oh, of so it's, it's become self aware so that's it yeah. yeah yeah and then it's but that woman is isn't that, that bald be. woman like it's been a long time I, I, I could be really wrong but I think that bald woman was created could be by the AI of the th- anyway I don't yeah know. well they all blew into one. So this is yeah. cool. When you first read that, I was thinking, oh, so it's something we sent up that's like secret, but no, that's even cooler. It's been sent here by yep. 
aliens and, and it's being used by I imagine aliens that are present on Earth yeah. to communicate. It's like what we'll do once we find out the habitable Earth, we'll mm. send probes. Yeah. Mm. Are they using it as their sort of, aliens who are here on Earth? Maybe they're using that as their Wi-Fi router yeah. to communicate back to their as well. worlds. You know what I mean? That's, That's it. Basically, an uber-powered. Could be taking pictures, routers. satellite photos, yeah. and sending all that. Sending it all back. back to aliens. Yeah, the reptilians, That's what you have, isn't it? All the reptilians on this planet have got mm. that up there as their like their communications That's back to the Draco system. With, yeah, yeah. All is going to plan, Ooh. and that's why we never heard about it. Yeah. Shall I tell you what Robert Johnson, the director of the Adler Planetarium, says about it? Go on. Go on then. He says the object doesn't even have the decency to maintain a regular schedule like any other heavenly or man-made object. We don't know when to watch for it. Well, so it's got a regular polar orbit. Yep. And isn't it, I heard... It's twice as fast as any other satellite, and it possibly weighs around 15 tonnes, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah. also, I think I learned on a video today that, I can't remember the word for it, but when something is travelling in orbit opposite to the orbit... Of the Earth, it's got a, a fucking name. I forget the name. Shit. But anyway, we haven't had the technology to do that until fairly recently to send something up that goes the other way. But this has been up there since before. Thousands of years? Yeah. But in 1954, the technology magazine Aviation Week and Space Technology suggested the US military had discovered two mysterious satellites in orbit, and this is a year before Sputnik. So nothing had gone up. Yeah, because there wasn't there a bit of security worry that um, oh they beat us the Russians yeah. have well, beat yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, the missile gap. They can mm. they get something to space and get a missile over here. No, but I think I saw in a video earlier when this was Black Knight was first discovered. There was some panic within the intelligence mm. communities that like Russia had. Yeah, done it. something up there. But uh, the Pentagon was furious, and an explanation was quickly put out. That the satellites were actually asteroids oh. that had been captured by the Earth's orbit. Mm. Now, that does happen. It's very, very, very rare that it happens, but it can happen. But the situ the circumstances have to be incredibly fucking precise. Right. And basically, that explanation was scoffed at by mm. every expert in the field. Mm. Uh, in 1960, the US Navy's Dark Fence radar system, that's pretty metal. Does sound pretty cool. Dark yeah. Fence! <laughs> uh, made a spectacular discovery. A large black object in polar orbit, possibly weighing up to 15 tonnes. And they just couldn't get anything that heavy into space at the time. Mm. It's 1960. Yeah. Do you yeah. know why it's called the Black Knight Satellite? There was a few explanations, but... Named after a British rocket, I got. Yeah, that was the main one. It yeah. was we because back in the day when the Brits made their own stuff mm. in the sixties, and we made some really good planes, and we had a really good rocket program. Right. It was all state room. We had some fantastic rocket engineers. Our, I mean, we we built a plane. I go on a little tangent. We, we built this plane. It was something called the TR one or something like that, mm. and it was. So good, it would still be very, very, very good today, and they made it in the 60s. Oh. But because the program was expensive, yeah, shut down. Uh, they shut it down and bought some American planes instead. Yeah. Capitalism. And the same with our rocket program, the Black Knight, we were getting that. We were going to have a space program. These things were going to be intercontinental rockets and mm. submarines and all that. And the, the government just went, you know, we'll just buy the American system. It's cheaper. We won't develop our own. But we had some very, very talented people back in the 60s working on stuff like that. Mm. And so it was named after that? Yep. The Black Knight. I'd give it a cool name like a Black Knight. Yeah. Let's face it, it's pretty badass. So in 1954, reports emerged that Dr. Lincoln La Paz of the University of New Mexico spotted two satellites orbiting the Earth. La Paz denied the claims that it's possible the government was trying to cover up the sighting. Problem was, there's a second witness. Clyde Tombra, famed astronomer who discovered Pluto, was at UNM with Lincoln La Paz during the supposed black satellite sighting. Tomberg and La Paz were doing secret research in the military on the existence of alien satellites and the origins of other unexplained phenomena. Tombra also denied the satellite reports, but in a much more cryptic manner than his colleague. They got to them. Got to them? <laughs> Going for it? They always get to them. They always get to them. 
So the first satellite released into space, Sputnik 1, was launched by Russia in October 1957. In 1954, three years before Sputnik, retired Marine Corps Major Donald Kehoe claimed that two satellites were orbiting Earth and that the Secretary of the Air Force, Harold Talbot, had personally seen one of them. Talbot denies the claims. Kehoe was a UFO expert who wrote several non-fiction books on the subject and was taken quite seriously as a journalist. Then again, he's pushing books and he... He is. He is pushing books, and he was a very big. He yeah. was very big in the UFO community in the sixties. Yeah, he released Kehoe. an article, didn't he, in the Saint Louis Dispatch in the San Francisco Examiner. Mm. I believe he also wrote a book called Beyond Roswell, yeah. where he said that basically all the technology we've got now, all the advanced tech, comes from the Roswell crash. Mm. Well, that's pe- that's basically what Lazar is saying, isn't it? As well, Bob Lazar. Yeah. Kind of. The most boring man on the planet considering he's worked with alien technology. Uh Still haven't got through that fucking podcast. (laughs) Can't do it. I actually fell asleep in the bath listening to it. I mean, all right, I'm 36. I fall asleep in the bath nowadays. I'm always tired. But... Still, I usually fucking finish a podcast. No, mate. I I found my first white hair today, my beard. Oh! Oh. Yesterday, sorry. Oh, my God. There's two of the fuckers. Oh, no. I've turned the corner now. uh, (laughs) Don't worry, my missus has found a couple as well, so... You're not the only one. I'll have to. It's not uh, good. Was it scary? Was it a scary yeah, it was moment? a bit of a shock. Like, fuck me. No. Was it really? Yeah. Two white hair, I'll show you later. I don't need to show me. <laughs> you can just show me them if you put them out. They're cute. I'll put them, <laughs> <laughs> them in. I didn't pluck them out. <laughs> I'm not really bothered, but it was just a shock. Yeah. It was the shock at seeing a white hair. I was like, oh, oh mate. Oh, it's all down. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a slow, decrepit decline. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the ever, ever creeping presence of death that oh. is among upon you. I smell death. <laughs> you smell of death, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you coming for me? You reek of it. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do as many podcasts and go to as many ice hockey games what, as Jimmy we can. Savile? <laughs> <laughs> what Jimmy Savile? What? What? No, don't do that. What? Is that a reek of death? I thought not Jimmy Savile. No, I thought you said fuck Jimmy Savile. I was going to say no, don't do that. Oh. <laughs> if you fuck trust Jimmy us to get to you'd Jimmy. just be Jimmy Savile. Trust I would us. stink of death then. You would stink of death, but you'd also just be Jimmy Savile. It's a podcast about a fucking alien satellite, <laughs> and we've got to fucking Savile again. <laughs> Like we're obsessed with him. <laughs> well, he's the ultimate brother. bad guy, isn't he? He's sort yeah. of replaced Hitler as the comedy bad guy. Yeah. He's a uh, Scooby Doo villain, that's why. But his, well, his face tell was... that to the victim. <laughs> Give, he looked like a Scooby Doo villain, but that was yeah, his actual face. He would have face. gone away with it too <laughs> if it wasn't for those pesky kids. <laughs> if he weren't meddling with those kids. <laughs> All those corpses. <laughs> of kids. <laughs> See our Christmas episode. Jingle <laughs> fucking jangle. Anyway, back to the alien satellite. <laughs> so in February 1960, several magazines and newspapers reported on a mysterious satellite detected by the US military. No one knew where it came from. In March 1960, Time magazine claimed the object was a retro rocket from a Discoverer satellite. See, when a satellite returns to Earth, it fires a retro rocket to slow its descent. The retro rocket has a parachute and is supposed to be picked up by scout planes as it falls. According to Time, when this particular discoverer launched his retro rocket in August 1959, it disappeared and no one noticed it orbiting for five months, even though the Department of Defence employed people whose sole responsibility was the monitoring of objects in space. Weird, don't it? Never a straight answer. Yeah. We saw nothing. Did the astronaut Gordon Cooper see it? Some claim that in 1963, astronaut Gordon Cooper saw a UFO cut across the sky while on a Mercury 9 spaceflight over Perth in Australia. Reports indicate the object was also seen on the radar at the Mukia tracking station outside Perth. Cooper has explicitly denied these claims and others are convinced he was coerced into silence. Mm. Got to him as well. You got to war, guys. Yeah, that's it. Uh, in 1974, Scottish astronomy writer Duncan Lunan 
purported to have decoded the LDE's Jorgen Hals heard in the 20s. Lunin claimed they were a map of the star system Epsilon Butis. <laughs> it's got a little umlauts on the yeah. L. I just say Butis. Could the message have come from aliens on a planet in the Epsilon Butis system? Mm. No, that's what he claims. He's an astronomer. Not yeah. like, I don't know what the Epsilon Butis system is. He claims that the, the stars aren't lined up now, but if you go back 13,000 years, they were. So it is the probe from 13,000 years ago. But if well, then, if, it has to be alien, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Well, no, not if you believe oh, ancient civilizations. Well, there is that theory. A remnant of maybe that was their the GPS system. You have to have yeah. satellites to have GPS. They could have had technology that advanced. We don't know. It's all been oh, yeah. wiped out. So I suppose you've got. We're looking at two distinct possibilities here. Mm. Well, the two, the two most likely in my mind, mm -hmm. obviously number one, aliens. Yeah. Number two, we've had many civilizations on this planet have got to a point and then destroyed mm. themselves, and enough of us survived to rebuild and get to this point again. Or a meteor hit them and. Yeah, yeah. Worked Either way, we've had some civilization enders and mm -hmm. we've come back. Yeah. Because you've got a plucky bulldog spirit. Yeah. It could be us from the past left Earth and went to Epsilon Butis and left it <coughs> behind. Huh? Well, it because could be. they, co oh, they decoded it, didn't they? You haven't got what it says, have you? No. It, apparently it said, start here. What did, sorry? Oh. He decoded the LEDs, then he mapped out the delays from the echoes. And right. found they formed a pattern of the Booty's constellation. Right. And he decoded the message, and it, it apparently comes from a start point between the orbits of Earth and the Moon. Ah. Wow. Orbiting the Earth, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And apparently the, the coded message said, Start here. Our home is Epsilon Booty's, which is a double star. We live on the sixth planet of seven. Check that, six of seven. Counting outwards from the Sun, which is the larger of the two. Our sixth planet has one moon, our fourth planet has three, our first and third planets each have one. Our probe is in the orbit of your moon. This updates the position of Arcturus shown on our maps. Wow. That's incredible, but also... It could be bollocks. Isn't it? The <laughs> but you it know that be. thing with, with Zachariah Sitchin, he translated the tablets. But he's the only one on Earth who's done... It's, he's, it's a total guessing game. Is it that similar to... That's that man's interpretation. This might as well be the Book of Mormon and the fucking uh, tablets and the seer stones. And he's not like Zachariah mm. Stitch. He's like, well, I say it's I this, think so it it's, says I this. don't know how he decoded the message, but he was a Scottish science writer, so he's not a, he's not a scientist. He's so probably a fair, I think. But let's never... never <laughs> it's like six or seven planets. Never discount the... Uh, Scottish pension for cheap whiskey and tenant soup. They're good scientists though as well, aren't they? They are. Alexander Graham Bell. And engineers. So wasn't the guy? In I mean, the I don't know. Seven? This guy could be bang. What if that is absolutely banged on? Which one is the sixth planet? Well, is it in the system? They're just staying oh, in their system. Yeah, in oh, their fuck. system. I was going to say like they're only down the road on Venus or something. No, like, oh. no, Venus is quite close to the sun as well. Going the other way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Could be um, the ninth planet, Neptune. Mm. There were six away. But yeah, it's a different star system. Basically, right. when you look in the sky in the northern hemisphere, you see the plough. You ever seen the constellation of the plough? I'm aware of it, but I've not seen it in the sky. You, you, you'll have seen it in I'm the sky. You, it's, it's, well, it's a very big... It's, they're some of the brightest stars in the sky. That's where these stars are. Right. Well... So... We... So he's saying, from the decoded message, we fucked off in the past and left Earth. And left mm. that behind. This is where we are now. Come, yeah. come and join us. Mm. Come join us, Earthlings. Um, Nothing uh, bad will happen. We will maybe that's you. what the elites are trying to do, but only them are the ones that are going to go, and they're leaving the planet to fucking yeah. <laughs> explode. And so, in the Endeavour, which is a space shuttle, in 1998, captured a picture of something floating outside the craft. NASA wrote it off as a lost thermal blanket. But others contend it seems too rigid to be a blanket. And there is a video further down which we'll watch off air because it's a little bit, we have to skip through it a little bit. So apparently it's also visited Earth. In August 2015, footage emerged from Jacksonville, Florida, showing a mysterious object hovering in the sky. It looked like suspiciously like the object in the photo from the Endeavour, and some claim it is the Black Knight satellite. Hmm. 
Yes, I've seen that. Thermal Pepsi. blankets. Yeah, I don't believe that. Wouldn't that disintegrate quickly? And, like, I mean, I don't know. I'm not an expert. I don't know what it's it made of. It wouldn't be black mm. because the sun would bleach it. Right. Yeah, but the bottom of the oh. show's black. Yeah, but I'm trying to say, if it's been in space since 1998 or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then it will bleach, wouldn't it? In the sun, sure, like the flags did. Or would it would it have been there for that age, or that long. It would have just got into the yeah, atmosphere yeah, and burned, wouldn't probably. it? It yeah, would have had a, a retrograde. It looks too, looks too big to be a blanket. It's hard to have a sense of perspective. perspective yeah. 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 You've got nothing to compare it to. It still looks pretty big. It looks pretty big. Yeah, I mean, it does. You're right. Unless you can go and check this out, it's a photo of the Black Knight from the uh, Endeavour shuttle mission. Yeah, his blanket is it big, that is. Hard <laughs> <laughs> oh, to the joints. Easy, easy. <laughs> big Daddy versus Andre the Giant. That would have been a wrestling mm. match for the ages. Yeah. I would have liked to see Big Daddy versus Hogan. Oh. Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing though. Back to the Black Knight. That picture that we're looking at, and if you can find it, listener, like Ben just said, Google that Endeavour picture. It's not really very sort of. That's not a good shape, is it, for a satellite? Or I'm no expert, but it's just like a bit. Looks like a bit of rough. It's well, all that, off, so that's it. I mean, all of ours yeah, got sort of big, sort of solar panelled wings. Yeah, that's very you're, true. Going, you're going by our technology. You don't know what the fuck alien technology is. It's thirteen thousand years old. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, that's true. or it could just be a, a lump of space rock. Well, it could be, but these, I mean, astro- as we said earlier, asteroids do get caught in the atmosphere, but it's very, very rare. Mm. And usually they just come down eventually. You know? I'm not buying the thermal blanket. No. No, it seems like shit. a bit of a yeah, simple thing. Like, how did they lose the thermal blanket? Well, they, they did lose it, apparently. Oh, right. It has been documented. They lose loads of stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I suppose, and they're doing jobs. Have you seen how much space debris there is? Mm. Well, yeah. If you look at a map, you can see it all. It's like incredible. It's just like yeah, covered. They have to time launches yeah. now around the fucking debris. I mean, if we're not, we're destroying the earth. We're not content we're to that. Space. We're fucking, uh, do you know what I mean? It's incredible. Mad, isn't it? I I was thinking of writing a story like this should be a, a like space bin men. Yeah. Someone's going to yeah. invent. Well, that someone scene, is. Dev- someone uh, has designed a robot up there just to collect trash. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about a comedy in space, a bit like Red Dwarf, just working class bin men type people, only they're in orbit. <laughs> like, yeah. Clearing up shit. Copyright me, there's an idea in there somewhere. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it could be another just a heap of shit, couldn't it? A lump of shit, a lump of something. Could have been, because don't things I imagine smash into each other eventually in orbit? Mm, if possibly, yeah. Because I, I was hearing, yeah. we talked about it on I think the Star Wars episode, I think, strangely. We talked about how like a fleck of paint That's that right. chips off a, a satellite in space could fly around in orbit so fast, come around, hit your windscreen of your space station and fucking... Yeah, yep. It's something like it. going off with the force of a hand grenade because yeah. it's, it's a 5,000 kilometres yeah. fucking second or something ridiculously fast. So... I imagine um, that things might clash up there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so stuff hits stuff. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of non-alien explanations. I think potentially because we've got the alien tech. Mm. What if this is some kind of long-range transmitter for our solar warden fleet out there patrolling the mm-hmm. edge of it? You know, what if this is like right? Well, we've got solar warden. We've had it since the sixties. Maybe that is solar warden. Yeah. Maybe it's a weapon. Mm. It's like Star- well, we put Star Wars up there. Maybe this is just the. This is like a massive fucking mm. orbital cannon. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty fucking cool. It is. Grimdark. But cool. Maybe that's how we survive meteorite. Yeah. Impacts because civilization was wiped out before, and we've learned they hold on to that knowledge, the elites, but they don't let us know that twelve thousand years ago we were as even more advanced than we are now, but were wiped out by meteorites. So we have this. Laser beast in orbit to um, protect us from that. I don't know. Mm. One of the planets does a good job of it. Is it Saturn or Venus or Jupiter? Jupiter. Jupiter. It's Is it, yeah. the biggest one, it's isn't a, it? Jupiter, it's our shit. Basically, it wasn't there. We'd be fucked a yeah. thousand times over. Like, it's a big, awesome shield. Thank you, Jupiter. Thanks, yeah. Jupiter. Let's have a mm. Jupiter appreciation day. We fucking should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. We wouldn't be here without him. But on that, we'll have that uh, Jupiter appreciation day, and the day mm. after, we'll get hit by a meteoroid, <laughs> and all the fucking all, all the survivors be cursing Jupiter. Yeah. Do you remember that in the nineties? 
when you got to see it live happening, that me Yeah, yeah. It was fucking amazing. I remember seeing that as a kid thinking, what the fuck? You, know, you literally saw the fucking explosion yeah. as it went, went in, yeah. Levy great. Shoemaker 9, I believe it was called, the, the asteroid. Is that there, yeah, or is that from Deep Impact? I don't know. Because I'm <laughs> sure it was something similar. I don't know. I don't Google it, listener. It was an that was asteroid. a terrible film, actually, Deep Impact. I don't know if I've seen that one. It yeah, gets Morgan Freeman. Is that the Morgan Freeman one? Yeah, right. Because yeah, yeah. they all melted. Hello, Elijah Woods. Because what was the one that came out at exactly the same Armageddon time? Armageddon with Bruce Willis. Oh, the the star cast. I remember about that one. I spend my life. Oof. <laughs> that song got less awful for me, though. It's still awful, but less awful. Because I never realised. Somebody was talking about it on a podcast. He's talking about his daughter. So he's watching a baby sleep. That's yeah. way less like than like the sentiment of yeah. If he's singing to a lover, it's just like oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, nobody mm-hmm. watches it. Why are you watching her sleep? <laughs> <laughs> you could be doing shit that she doesn't normally let you do because she's asleep. <laughs> you could be watching the hardcore pornography. Anything. You could be on your PlayStation. Sneaky downstairs after I was drinking. Yeah. You know, not that that's a thing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Moving on. In January 2016, footage from the International Space Station showed an object that looked suspiciously like the Black Knight satellite floating nearby. NASA provided no explanation for the mystery object. No frustrating answer. Yeah. In 2015, Pepsi released a short film entitled Black Knight Decoded. A story follows characters played by uh, David Oliwo, I think, and Frida Pinto as they decode transmissions from the Black Knight satellite and release into the world. Further short, the government tries desperately to shut the operation down. Does the government actually know something about Black Knight? Maybe, but take this evidence with a grain of salt. It was written and produced by a noted liar, James Frey, and also, it's basically just an extended music video for an Usher song, and it was made by Pepsi. Well, why, would still Pepsi make it? why would Pepsi make it? I think it's weird. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with the theory. It's obviously, you know, I have zero evidence to back this up, but some high up executive at Pepsi, got to be one of the wealthiest people alive. Pepsi have to be one of the biggest companies on earth, yeah. don't they? Oh, and all so, their subsidiaries, guys. Yeah, so some mega higher up at Pepsi, you know got access to a bit of knowledge doesn't like it mm. and he thinks oh, I've got power and money I'm going to uh, I'm going to subconsciously I'm going to well not even that subtly or subconsciously I'm going to blatantly tell people through a fucking music video the biggest secret that the elites have just because he's a bit of a troll a bit of a mm. like mm. fuck you to the other elites yeah you mean like or, when they release the island or it could simply be that Pepsi are that cynically good at marketing and advertising they know that there is an absolute rise in the proliferation of conspiracy theory through normal population through people you wouldn't normally associate especially with especially aliens yeah in this day and age look at Bud Light yeah and they did the alien can there for the uh, yeah. storming of so it could just be incredibly one. good marketing basically mm-hmm. like yeah we know people are into this shit in this day and age oh it could be a coded yeah. message yeah I still think it's slightly weird that Pepsi mm-hmm. would make that yeah what, like, what the fuck's it even have? Like, it doesn't even expressly mention no. Pepsi. No, no, no one is drinking a Drake. Pepsi. Okay, it's a Drake yes. song, but to us three mm-hmm. sat here, we don't know who the fuck Drake is. It's Usher. Oh, sorry, Usher. <laughs> I don't know who that is either. And I wouldn't be, be able to explain. Did the thong song, didn't he? Oh, okay, I remember mm. that. That's yeah. when we were at school. Thong, 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 thong. But, like, so it wasn't even overtly, like, that much of a music video, was it? It's a bit strange. Yeah. Of all the ways of promoting. Yeah. I like the fact that they said, oh, it's ancient Sumerian. That's pretty good cool detail. And it's like, well, hang on, because that ties then into the Anunnaki. Mm. And we don't want them coming back, because we're back down the gold mine again, won't we? Well, Sumerian. Damn you, Anunnaki. Damn, damn you, Anunnaki. <laughs> Anunnaki. <laughs> well, I go back to my earlier theory that I came up with on the fly, that ancient Sumer, ancient, even older than that, maybe it was just simply a communication satellite similar to what we have up there now. You know what I mean? They just yeah. got as advanced as we are now and they, they died out, they were wiped out, but it doesn't mean their satellite would be, would it? That's it, yeah. Also, 
Just because the entire world, for one night, on a full moon, decides we're all going to be lovey-dovey, doesn't excuse the sort of last, I don't know, couple of hundred years of mass warfare and genocide. Do you think all the nukes put in each other? And all the nukes Do you think on that day... Aliens aren't stupid. On that day, where we're all doing that peace thing, do you think the wars are going to start? All the wars are just going to start? They're they're not going to give a fuck about it, are they? Are they? Are the child... Soldiers going to be pulled out of the mines in Africa yeah. and things like that. And they're going to stop cluster bombing Yemen. No, no, no. no. no because the so, thing is, like, if you think of it, the Amazon rainforest, right? Well, they've got no fucking knowledge that this is going on whatsoever. Exactly. They're still like, someone might fucking stab someone else, you know? Yeah. You know, is it going to, like you said, is it going to stop the child yeah. soldiers in Africa off their face on fucking crack? Or the cannibals in Papua New Guinea? Yeah. yeah. So, no, your argument's flawed, Pepsi. <laughs> Nice, 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 nice idea, message, though. sir. We love it. I, I like the message. But, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just think that's kind of weird for them to make yeah. that. I really do. Yeah. All very cynical of them and clever. Mm. You know, just playing in the zeitgeist. They know conspiracy theory is a thing. Alien belief is a thing. And maybe it is a nice... Because they like to go for this, don't they? Remember when they fucked it up with the, the advert they tried to do during the riots... When all the rioting was happening in America, yeah. and Kylie Jenner, or whoever it was, like offers, opened a Pepsi. she offers yeah. a Pepsi and gives it to the riot, riot police. police, and it calms everything down. And everyone literally saw this; they, it got took off the air quick. They fucked yeah. up. They misjudged it. How can but you misjudge that? I mean, but obviously they like to use social justice and that kind of thing as a platform to sell yeah, cola. Yeah. This idea of oh well, peace, we're all one, guys. It's they, they're not above using that. In a cynical ploy to just sell more fucking cola. No. Also, I do, I, but man, I do like the idea of yeah. some, some rogue exec being, no, it's very important. <laughs> you want the new promotion to be based on what? It's, it's called the Black Knight, okay? <laughs> They've decoded an ancient yeah. Sumerian S- signal, right? <laughs> Hang on a minute, this is code, this is Pepsi. Where does the, where does the Usher song yeah. it, it will f- just. F- we'll play at the end. Who's paying for this shit? <laughs> Me, Mr. Pepsi. Now just do the fucking advert I fucking won. Tell us you to suck my Pepsi. I like the fact you think the guy who owns Mr. Pepsi is called, Pepsi. Pepsi. called Mr. Pepsi. Pepsi yeah. <laughs> I have the largest <laughs> share. I'm Mr. Pepsi. I'm Mr. Pepsi. <laughs> that's how business works. <laughs> I, I, the CEO of McDonald's is... Ronald it's McDonald, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> creepy, creepy bastard. Yeah. Creepy. Remember in our local McDonald's, there used to be, there must have been all over the country. There used to be, there's no Ronald McDonald but, things now. Yeah, but yeah. for the listeners, this was horrific. Remember there used to be a bench? Yeah. With a, yeah. Mo- a giant moulded plastic Ronald yeah, at yeah. the end of the bench and his arm was out like that, so you had to sit. God, it was freaky and horrible. With his arm around you. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Who didn't yeah. have a children's party at McDonald's, man? It was yeah. a I had thing, was it? I was funny, I was speaking with that to my dad, and he said, do you remember, they used to throw them fucking spoons on the floor, <laughs> and you had, to go, you had to go pick as many up as you could. And yeah. was this Romania? <laughs> so you took the little plastic, the other McDonald's old plastic stirrers, yeah. little spoons. Yeah. What they used to do, mm. one of the party games, is they would have a that. bag of them, and they'd mm. throw them down, you had to pick as many as you wouldn't bonus food. Oh, uh, I can remember doing like balloon games and stuff. Yeah, I don't remember the pick up plastic but, spoons. Did you just say there's no Ronald McDonald stuff in there anymore? No, I, I went what? in there a couple of weeks ago and there is no. Um, they, they, in they, the Telford one anyway, there is no sort of. They've moved beyond Ronald. They've moved beyond Ronald. Right. Yeah, well, uh, everyone knows clones are creepy and pedos. Right, right. And possibly serial killers. Yeah, that well, bench was fucking horrible. We apologise to any clone listeners. No, fuck the clone <laughs> listeners. I don't care about the clone. I don't care about the clone market. Fuck them. To be honest, when I sat on the big moulded plastic thumb, it went right up my arse. <laughs> I, I was violated, yeah, so and I blame Ronald. That wasn't a thumb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have to sit on it either. The bench was free, but <laughs> he still violated me. It was the organ energy they just wanted it from you, from your young, Get away young from subtle my body. <laughs> you stay away from my organs, Ronald. Your organ energy, yeah. Uh, right. Back to the Black Knight. Yeah. <laughs> Spotted near the International Space Station. In January 2016, footage of the International Space Station, the ISS, showed an object that looked suspiciously like the Black Knight satellite floating nearby. NASA provided no explanation for the mystery object. 
So we'll watch that now. So yeah, we watched the footage just, um, you can go and find it. It's January 2016 footage shows an object that looks like the Black Knight. Now, it's 10 minutes long, seven minutes long, sorry. And I think the first couple of minutes possibly look genuine. Gaz and I both think that the, the footage after that, as he gets closer and starts, you know, to pick out a defined shape, looks a bit CGI yeah, for us. Doesn't look a bit. Well, you might. Could be, yeah. I, I, don't, I wouldn't like to say that. I'm on the fence. But I think the first bit had something to it, possibly. Mm. And I think whoever's made that has then tried to, to sex it up. Yeah, I agree. Very so interesting. Apparently, yeah. Philip K. Dick was contacted by him. Oh, yeah, is this where he was meant to? Yeah, probably. In that interview we watched. <laughs> didn't he? Yes, go and see Mandela Effect. Mm. Yeah, when he just rambled on for eight minutes, I couldn't make out what the <laughs> fuck he was on about. He's using rambled too many. On. Yeah. He rambled on. He was basically saying that he's seen a different parallel universe or something, a different timeline. Yeah, yeah. And he, someone with black hair came back and told him that he'd been receiving messages. He was doing a lot of drugs. Yeah. You know. Mm. Let's see what he. What did he have to say then? Well, he kept a journal in which he documented his experience with an extraterrestrial being. Part of this journal are published in a collection called the Exegem Exegesis, which included detailed passages about recurring hallucinations Dick experienced. These visions involved an entity he called the Vast Active Living Intelligence System, or VALIS. Good band. Vast. No, VALIS. Oh. Mm. Yeah, they're like a stoner rock band. No, Vast are also a bigger band. Yeah. Dick claimed Vallis was a satellite, the sole purpose of which was to act as a communication tool between humans and extraterrestrial beings. Does that sound familiar? Mm. And I think really the only thing we don't know is no one knows where the name Black Knight came from. Now we mentioned it previously that it could have been a British rocket name or... Yeah. So that's the Black Knight. Satellites are what we're going for. I mean, that's where are we at. Have you got anything else, Mike? Yeah, Project Corona. Oh, Project Corona, sorry, yeah. It was a programme, it was a series of American strategic reconnaissance satellites produced and operated by the CIA. Those bastards. Yeah. Uh, with substantial assistance from the US Air Force. The, the Corona satellites were used for photographic surveillance of the Soviet Union, the People's Republic of China and other areas beginning in June 1959 and ending in May 1972. So, 59... Then they're saying we can't have satellites. Well, the thing, the thing is, the Black Knight satellites are meant to be fucking huge. Which these things probably weren't, I'd imagine. Yeah, and maybe they weren't in orbit. Mm -hmm. or maybe they were, I don't know. Yeah, because Sputnik was up with them, wasn't it? 59, yeah. yeah. So what was the... But it doesn't explain about the sightings in 54. No, or Tesla's mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. That could have been Pulsar stars. Mm -hmm. Well... But also the guy in the twenties, who picked up the same yeah. thing, you know. Although there are scientific explanations possibly for the LDS. There are, but the Corona. I mean, the thing is, it doesn't go beyond the realms of possibility for me. Just because the Sputniks launched, uh, the Russians launched Sputnik, the US didn't have that fucking technology as it was, and we just instead of going mm, space race, nah, let's use it to spy on people. Mm. It wouldn't surprise me if they had that tech and when the Russians did Sputnik, they thought, oh shit, well we've got that, but they've now beat us to it in terms of the world. You know, the world's seen that, and we've got that, but we didn't announce it. That doesn't surprise me. Well, but if we believe that the conspiracy theory is that in 47 we got all the alien tech. That's true. We haven't, one thing we haven't said is it whatever crashed at Roswell... Was that a scout ship which came from a mothership? And is the Black Knight the mothership? Yeah. So they used somehow the Black Knight to get here from another uh, Possible. galaxy, then left in smaller ships because if it's huge. Um, yeah, 15 tons. Potential. It's not massive, is no, it? But it's, it'll be enough to sustain a ship. 15 tons, a couple of ships, I don't know. The thing that crashed I think it was was a little bit. Well, or maybe it could a be a Bracewell probe. But they wouldn't have got it. We talked about this on Roswell, wouldn't they? They couldn't have got all the way from another galaxy in a little foil. Well, we don't know. Fucking, well, we probably travelled, didn't we say we we came to the conclusion it may have travelled fucking 
like through a wormhole. Yeah, basically. Yeah, because theoretically you can bend space. Mm. So what if this thing is like a wormhole amplifier? Could be. And that's what we get the uh, UFO sightings, uh, the flying, the unidentified craft. Mm. Could be a lot of things. Could be a thermal blanket. Could be a thermal blanket <laughs> dropped by some careless astronauts. Could be a lump of rock. I'm going with ancient satellite of human origin. Oh, it's Ooh. human origin. Mm -hmm. From what? Going for, man? I'm going for the um, the alien option. I think that they're they're, they're watching us. I think it's um, for many reasons. Maybe we're a zoo. Maybe we're a prison planet. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're. Maybe they've heard of our reputation because we can be a little bit cunty. That's it. And thirteen thousand years ago, we were still being cunty to each other. Mm. So. Yeah, maybe it's that. Maybe they're just checking us out. Maybe they created us and they keep an eye. Maybe we're a reality TV show for these fuckers. <laughs> Who knows? I think it's uh, the, the ancient equivalent of the Star Wars program. Just or like... the ancient GPS or ancient Wi Fi. Mm. Just they had. I'm, I'm going for there was a civilization at the similar level technology that we've got now, so they'd have space stuff. Yeah. Satellites and you know they were wiped out, but their space tech wasn't. Yeah, that makes know. sense. As good as any. We'll never know. I'm going for probably space junk, but I'm not. <laughs> but I'm not ruling it out. I'm on the fence. No surprises there. <laughs> I'm a scientist. Scientists yeah. are usually on the fence. And this is conclusive. How many splinters have you got here? Ask a lot. Hundred. <laughs> A hundred and something episodes yeah. in, and Mike just hasn't got off the fence yet. But also, <laughs> nobody can like point to him and go, "Ah, you dick! You were so wrong." <laughs> That's it's true. This. <laughs> well, I, I always stand by the alien side of things. It's, it's my yeah. thing. Well, definitely food for thought. Very interesting. Yeah. I think there's, I think there's something up there. Mm. I do. I, yeah. I watch. I think there's something there. That, and would NASA tell us? No, of course they fucking wouldn't. No, nah. I mean, we haven't even got disclosure yet. They're going to announce us a bit of. A 15 ton satellite going on a polar orbit for the last 13,000 years, are they? No. They also I mean, you know, they don't like, want to admit to not knowing what something mm, is. That's also true. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing is, all right, the uh, US Navy going, oh, we're seeing these unidentified aerial phenomena every day. Mm. Our fighters are just like being left in, in their wake. Yeah. And then NASA goes, oh, by the way, <laughs> that's all. So we've got soft disclosure with that. Mm -hmm. It's a soft mm -hmm. disclosure, isn't it? Now imagine the fucking panic. If they said, oh, by the way, last 13,000 years, being watched by an alien race, a satellite in space, everyone would freak the fuck out. Yeah. It's, by the way, it's also so, monitoring every single thing our fucking I'm not so sure we would so. now. I think, I think it'd be like that. If it was in the 50s and the 40s and the 60s, then maybe the population I never underestimate the but human... But now we're saturated with alien stuff. I think people just go, well, yeah, I thought so anyway. We touched on this. It surprise me. Yeah, being yeah, psychically would. prepared. No, I think we a lot would. Of people would. You think our parents would cope well with that news? Yeah, my mum believes in them. Is she? Yeah, she's a total believer in aliens. I don't know why. <laughs> Which I my can't. dad's. Have you told her about the Kelly Hawkins I voice? literally cannot I comprehend. My dad's my mom a skeptic. My mum loves that Computing that knowledge. I'm <laughs> trying to picture what it would do. I cannot. So they're watching the news. Breaking, you know, tonight's top story in an emergency bulletin. We have made contact with extraterrestrial life. He got pork chops in the freezer, Aldi. <laughs> is curry coming back on tonight? Or is it going to be this alien stuff all bloody night? <laughs> have you put the bins out yet? I just can't imagine. <laughs> uh, whereas I think I might go outside and have a joint, look at the sky a bit and be like, I can do it, man. I wonder if they're going to fuck us up or be friends with us. I don't know, everyone. But I also think that Pepsi advert that we watched, where they all start making peace signs and lovely, beautiful patterns for him, I think it'll be something similar to that, but it will, <laughs> I think people will be desperately panicked. They find out that satellite's observing us. They'll be drawing giant cocks and there'll yeah. be people <laughs> doing like a man bending over a sheep and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, would, There'll yeah. be people trying to do serious yeah. things as well, art projects and community stuff, but there will also be pranksters. Yeah. 
the world's biggest cock will be drawn, of made course, out of people. Yeah. Of yeah. course. A world record people get together. I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sums up humanity like a giant cock. <laughs> Does or, it? or men. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, a like giant cock and balls, a bunch of people acting as those little couple little of fucking squirts, juice, juice squirts. Yeah. squirts yeah. Or lying Should down. do a vein on it as well? Yeah, just a really vein on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can guarantee that. The entire population of fucking Bristol go out and do it or something like that. Imagine trying to compute it in their galaxy, like, they're using their bodies to make giant representations of their genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> we see this as a sign of disrespect. <laughs> we shall glass the planet to move on. <laughs> yeah. uh, I bet you'll get fucking rednecks trying to chuck stuff at yeah. it, but then the bottles fall back down and smash <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Redneck deaths. Fuck you, Black Knight, Sandlot. Black Knight. <laughs> Throw it up and... <laughs> oh. I think that one's going to make it, Billy Bob George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... Cool, man. I don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> I think there's something up there. I think... I think yeah. You know, they wouldn't tell us about it if there was, let's face it. Nah. Well, if you're watching... Right on, dude. Yeah. Or something. Oh god, they probably are. So this is probably getting funneled. Free Biff Tannen? <laughs> Come on, alien satellite. You must admit it's pretty fucked up that he's there at the end. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just want to pray at the altar of an alien god. We can make one. <laughs> Oh, a real yeah. one, not a fake oh, one. Wait, oh. <laughs> we'd, <laughs> have to, <laughs> mate, we'd have to leave Telford for that. Oh, yeah. Come on. There's a lot of effort in it. <laughs> we don't leave Telford. <laughs> Uh, Maybe if they just installed the altar in the flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're a fucking agrophobe. <laughs> I'm turning into one. I really am. Outside's for losers. <laughs> it is, man. It's full of skunk pusses and jism monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going down there. <laughs> well, it's... there's my take. A modern Britain, it's full of <laughs> skunk pusses and jism monkeys. Well, could we wrap up the Black Knight segment so I can have yeah, a piss? Yeah, yeah, I, I think we've covered that. Okay, let's do some weird news and for Alex. Yeah. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. So let's end on some weird news and full Alex. So what we got first, Mike, on the weird news? Parents hire menacing Wrinkles the Clown to terrify their misbehaving children. Some female. Wow. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Everyone, including me, knows, cl- knows clowns can be scary. But what about one hired out by parents to spook their own kids? <laughs> Wrinkles the Clown is a new online documentary about a US urban legend of the same name, sparked by a series of viral videos of an apparently real-life Pennywise. In 2014, a YouTube page titled HVUC Wrinkles posted security camera footage of a child sleeping in their room before a clown silently emerges from under their bed and destroys the footage. <laughs> wow. According to the description, the video was supposedly shot in Sarasota, Florida in June 2013, one of the earliest, quote, sightings of Wrinkles the Clown. Cliff's been viewed more than 900,000 times, and as Wrinkles' popularity as an urban legend grew and more sightings were shared on social media, he can typically be seen wearing a red and white polka dot suit with black gloves and a white mask and black eye holes with receding white hair. His horrifying appearance is not what you expect from a children's party clown. But the legends claim some parents have invited them into their lives for a different reason. For a few hundred dollars, wrinkles are apparently make an appearance at a social event, prank your friends, or even stand menacingly outside someone's house, clutching a handful of balloons to complete the look. Wow. Wrinkles has not revealed his true identity in interviews, choosing to stay in character. The only information that he has revealed is his divorcee, former veteran from Rhode Island who moved to Florida after he retired. But instead of taking up golf, 
He decided to buy a creepy clown mask, some business cards and stickers, advertising a number for his service. And he must be getting off on psychologically traumatising <laughs> yeah. children. Yeah. He must be. Some of my favourite videos from a few years back on YouTube, and there weren't that many of them, but there were enough to make compilations, were... Remember the clown craze where mm. people were just hanging out, trying to freak people out? Videos of people trying to do that, but then it backfiring and the clown either being chased or shot at or beaten. Yeah. In, in the UK, them. we had a guy dressed as mm. Batman, yeah. who dressed as Christian Bale's Dark Knight, and chased away the clones. Amazing. I saw one where he tried to, it was in America, he tried like a fool, was just stood in the highway, and like, just a car full of lads just got out and beat him up. <laughs> it was just like, good! It was just one of them, and it's like, what did you, you know? Yeah. Anyway, this guy, Wrinkles, we're looking at, oh, God, because I'm not on these, I'm not bothered by clowns, Ben, but I am if they're making the, that's a, he's making the effort to be yeah. creepy. Yeah. And he's coming out of my one. fucking bed? He's crawling from underneath. Yeah. There's a photo here. Some parents have done that. Yeah. To their kid. Can you did imagine they, it? What, what the fuck? What would you do if your dad did that to you as a kid? Well, obviously I'd be in some kind of mental institution by now. Some kind of mental asylum. That is so... I mean... it's. Be, I can't imagine the trauma it would cause. They must I mean, look hate at their children. Look at the window, guys. Oh, they must hate their children. They really... So you know, you're charged with behaving, mate, so you, you call this fucking clown to yeah. freak them out. I've and heard you seriously give them fucking major social mm. problems yeah. and Look, emotional problems with it. No, do you know Every now and then I sneak up on the girls like, and go, Rah! jump into a room or something, and there's genuine screams for a second, and like then a, a, a second of laughing realisation, then anger. Like almost instantly, it happens really fast. Like ah, because <laughs> like, being scared isn't fun. Like, no, and that's just a gentle, you know. If I was actually in some horrific costume, yeah, I just I don't used know. to babysit. Yeah, I used to pretend yeah. that the devil had overtaken me. <laughs> I was coming to get them. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Probably traumatise them poor kids. <laughs> Wow. It's pretty dark. That is dark. <laughs> well, well, why did you do that? It takes. Just for entertainment. Oh, was your niece and nephew, was it? No, it was my next door neighbours. Mm. The devil. One, the one that we saw in the ice hockey. Mm. That was her. Oh, she looks well adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Do you know how much of a big thing it was for me to bump the, the Rory the Tiger? Fist bump him. Oh, I'm, I don't like claim for the listener. That was the mascot yeah. at the high sake game. We went. Yeah. To. So you don't like... raped by a mascot. <laughs> Is that why you don't like them? No, I wasn't raped by a mascot. <laughs> I just I don't like clones, mm -hmm. and I don't like the people who dress up as mascots. They freak well, me out a little bit. Their entire raison d'être. It's to make people happy. I know, but these There's a freaking... picture of me with a Care Bear at ten for ten centimeters. <laughs> Big giant care bear, I was about five. They just Rory the out. lion, Rory the tiger, sorry, the, dressed as an ice hockey player, fist bumped you in a corridor whilst walking from just buying your beer. That was pretty fucking It cool. was, but do you know how much it took me to do that? <laughs> as a 36 year old man, <laughs> I had to overcome <laughs> my fear. A of fucking mascot. Of mascots? <laughs> <laughs> I can understand clowns, but. I mean, what's it? You could easily get away from a mascot, mate. Easily. Well, it's a bit the fuck it up. Unless they fall on top of you. You know so, what I mean? Then you're just I like, actually, enveloped under the A few the years ago, I had one in the Thames Centre who was advertising <laughs> a cinema, and he was dressed as like a, a roll, a, a strip of film. You know, the old uh, yeah, cinema right. low yeah. pro, uh, mascot. How and old he, were you? Uh, I was in my late 20s. All right, okay. And he approached me, and I just looked at him <laughs> and said, fuck off. <laughs> and carry on walking. <laughs> You swear you're not going to be a fucking cinema voucher. Yeah. But I was just overcome by panic. Mm -hmm. I should keep my cool. What do you think's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so going to fucking... Next hockey game we go to, we're getting a picture of you all cuddled up yeah. with Rory with his arms around you. It's going to be awesome. That's not going to happen. The look of panic on Ben's... Yeah, That's come on. You've got to. Come on. Nah. Yeah. I'll fist bump him, but I'll I hug him. Three pints if you could. Three Rory. pints, eh? Oh, shit, what we doing? No. Three two pinters or three no, pints? No, no, no. I'll buy one two pinter if you cuddle Rory for a photo. One two pinter and one pint. 
No, <laughs> let's, 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 no, just one. Mate, it's good. It was three beers fucking... a minute ago. It was three beers. It was a joke. I don't want to actually <laughs> lose currency sterling <laughs> because you have some irrational fear of happy characters <laughs> who want to make you happy and have fun with you and they don't even talk. Is that what it is? Because they're silent and yeah. all like wavy yeah, and stuff. Yeah, don't like it. How about if sometimes you get a glimpse of the human eyes like through the mouth oh, or something? Oh, like that. <laughs> Rory. Is there's some kind of changeling? <laughs> Rory's a hockey player. He's more likely to pull your shirt over your head and punch you than touch your genitals. I'd kick his fucking ass. <laughs> Okay, should we do the next news story? Moving on. <laughs> Good news, these pills will make your farts smell like chocolate and roses. Well, mine already do. You could fucking do this unless you smell it. <laughs> <laughs> mine already do smell like that. <laughs> F- the fucking Satan's chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Mike. What's happening? These pills are developed by an inventor called Christian Puncheval, who is from the western town of Gesverez and claims they can change your smelly gross gas into a lovely fragrance of none other than chocolate or roses. Yes, you'll be shooting roses out of your butt, basically. Which is what I do! According to Puncheval, he has been developing the pill since 2007. The pill is reportedly all natural and there is nothing medical or drug based in the product. Lutin Malin, where the pills are sold, says the origin of the fart pill came to life when Puncheval said to himself, it would be more appropriate to be able to fart without bothering the neighbours. What's he doing? What's he eating? Bothering the neighbours? We were at a table with friends after a copious meal when we were nearly asphyxiated ourselves with our smelly farts. Uh, the gas wasn't the great... That great. Wasn't that great for our table neighbours. So something had to be done about this. You can disguise the sound of a fart, but not the stench. Just hold it in. Just yeah, go to the room and do yeah. it. So that's when he began his hard work to develop the magical pill. How exactly they are made? Well, according to Lutz and Malin, they had initially used mint and oestrogen for the pills, but unfortunately farts still stunk up the place, so we turned to natural dietary supplement ingredients. Those ingredients were tested, and in the end, it was that special mix that provided different benefits that gave the desired effect. Can you imagine the testing? Then get some, oh. then get some blokes and Brussels sprouts oh. and some oestrogen, and, and, and then go out and tits and farts everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and then all there, he's next to his ass, yeah. <laughs> his bare ass. I take the pills, right? They fart. <laughs> Eat the Brussels sprouts. They fart. Oh, yeah, it still smells like shit. <laughs> <laughs> still smells like shit. Right, change the mixture. <laughs> How much trial and error went on with oh, this? God, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I mean, come on. You got. Oh, yeah, he's still sticking the room out. Yeah, I got a bit of fucking wet in my face as well when he did it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, we need to change the mixture then. Change it. <laughs> no. No good. It's not going to work. Trial and error would not have been fun in this scientific experiment. Unless you're the bloke farting. I love a good fart. I love a rip one out. It's fantastic. Makes me feel good. While there's a bloke in a white coat millimetres away from your bum hole, though. It's <laughs> well, all a bit. There is that. Yeah. <laughs> then again, I'd want to really put in my strongest, wouldn't I, for that? <laughs> you might get performance anxiety. Ah, that's true. However, the company did note that taking one pill won't automatically make your fart smell like roses. Rather think of it as a treatment. You have to take it every day for it to progressive aromatise your digestive tract. Aromat- aromatise? Aromatise? Thus relieving stench and giving it a floral fragrance. Well, where's mine anyway? They also note the precise dosage depends on the individual's condition, dietary habits and the desired effect. They recommend taking two to six pills every day with your meal, followed by a glass of water. Well, fucking... Has anyone done any clinical tests? What's in them? Is it safe? Well, here's my fucking Uh. award for the most pointless scientific fucking invention of the century so far. If it works, it's pretty good, you ask me. Fuck! We all fart, fuck it! You'd have to fucking smell yours, mate. What well, you do? But you, Mine you know smell I mean? great anyway. Right, what's next? Actually, you never stood next to me after a night on Carlsberg. I don't, it doesn't matter. Oh. The beer doesn't matter. Carlsberg really fucking hits me. I, I mean, like, this is for you guys. I'm, I'm playing a, it's a new feature. 
Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna be semi regular. Are you trying to trigger me? Yes, basically, it's called Can Ben Trigger Gas <laughs> <laughs> with, with an article. The semi regular feature. Oh, come on, when I find something I think Gaz will be particularly triggered by. <laughs> so, <laughs> part of weird news, also <clears throat> new. SpongeBob SquarePants promotes, quote, violent and racist colonialism, university professor claims. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Holly M. Barker believes SpongeBob's home in Bikini Bottom refers to Bikini Atoll, where natives were relocated by the US government for nuclear testing. Well, I didn't know that till she told me. <laughs> I just thought yeah. Bikini Bottom because, I don't know, bikinis, the beach? No, Bikini Atoll. Bikini Atoll, where the. Uh, they test it on the oh, people. And five year olds are supposed to know this, I and stoners. <laughs> Before I've even you, read the fucking article. I'm just telling you that's what I know historically. Never they, heard of they, it. They used to bomb it every day, mate. And they even left some people there and did tests on them to see what the well, Maybe it's a did. joke on that. That Maybe it's a joke bikini bottom yeah. is at the bottom of that and that's radioactive. That's why they're all alive. Could be. That's, a, that's actually a conspiracy theory about SpongeBob, isn't it? That's oh, bad. is it? Because they, bikini bottom is bikini at all. Right. And the reason that uh, all these... Things are trotting around. It's because all the radiation is mutated. Of course, got you. So it's a bit of a, a fan theory, conspiracy theory about SpongeBob. That makes sense. There you go. It does, but it's not racist. Well, That's let's all. find out what the professor says. Read on, guys. <laughs> SpongeBob Square. I fucking love SpongeBob. I love SpongeBob. I mean, I mean, uh, really, it's great. Really, so really when good I saw about. this, I thought, you know what? He got me this through some lonely, fucking... depressed years. This is going to trigger Sponge, but I literally bought box sets and would just chong away on my horrible. own and watch fucking box sets <laughs> of it, mate. Fair because play. it was pure escapism. And what are these bastards going to do to my SpongeBob? SpongeBob SquarePants has been accused of normalising the colonialisation of indigenous lands by a professor at the University of Washington. The children's cartoon, which marked its 20th... Fuck me. Yeah. Mm. I remember, though, wow. it came out originally and flopped and went off the air for a few years. Uh, and then right. they brought it back mm. Mm. and it became a massive success. Huge. Well, it marked its 20th anniversary this year, but it was criticised in a report by Professor fucking Holly M. Barker. She wrote, quote... SpongeBob SquarePants and his friends play a role in normalising the settler colonial takings of indigenous lands while erasing the ancestral Bikinian people from their non fictional homeland. <laughs> Five year olds watch it, you <laughs> cunt! <laughs> the character SpongeBob is a friendly sea sponge who lives in a pineapple under the sea. Of course. Resist it, nobody's seeing it. <laughs> Among the other residents of a town called Bikini Bottom, Professor Barker believes that this is a reference to the real life Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Natives of Bikini Atoll were relocated in 1946 so the US military could use the area for nuclear testing during the Cold War, which drew criticism from the media after it was revealed that the inhabitants were left without adequate food or water to prevent them from starvation. Yeah, there's a brilliant John Pilger wow. film about also it. Also pretty dark. Yeah, yeah, very dark. What's the John Pilger film like? Is this easy covered this to He did, yeah. I forget what it was called. I think it's The Coming War with China, maybe? Later nuclear tests left the islands of the atoll contaminated with enough radiation to affect food growth in the soil, which meant the, in the island's inhabitants were unable to return, and those who did experienced issues such as stillbirths, miscarriages, and genetic abnormalities. It is a massive fucking... It's like a horrific radio thing, thing, basically. It's a hellhole, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. What they did is, is unforgivable. Mm. But it's our SpongeBob's fault. Yeah. So this has given rise to fan theories. Do you know what? This is all new to me. Obviously, I knew, I've seen the footage of them testing out there, but it just never clocked on to me. I never thought that, oh, yeah, maybe people lived there before they started testing. Well, you'd think that they would do it on somewhere uninhabited, yeah. wouldn't you? It just never crossed my mind. It's certainly never, and I've watched pretty much all of SpongeBob's, it never once crossed my mind that it meant anything deeper than the, the, the silliness that it is. You know what I mean? I, they, these people drive me <laughs> fucking insane trying to find... Normalising it, like, how many fucking of SpongeBob's core demographic even know of Bikini at all? 
Yeah, None of them, I'd imagine. Or well, certainly yeah. 95% of them. I don't many adults know about it. So, well, I literally, it was yeah. fucking news to me, and I'm not exactly a good test case, but I'm not the most no. dumbest of cut off of people. The bikini but, was named from being bikini at all because it was so shocking. Right. It was like, hey, look at this. It's as shocking as a nuclear blast. You're just covering tits and mange. Mm. Well, so let's read out a little bit. I, I, how does she think it's racist then? Well, this, oh, like you mentioned earlier, this has given rise to fan theories that cartoon inhabitants of Bikini Bottom owe their mutation to the testing. Professor Barker believes that, that as an American character allowed to inhabit an area that natives had no choice but to leave, SpongeBob showed his privilege of not caring about the death <laughs> <laughs> I knew as soon as he said privilege, he was going to crack. <laughs> So, uh, so SpongeBob. Did it ever expressly say that SpongeBob came from anywhere else? Or that, how does she know SpongeBob? Is inhabits an area. He was born there as well, wasn't he? Why is he inhabited somewhere? Or is she on about? He's shown his privilege over the actual real humans that had to leave the mm. island. Is that what she's actually fucking saying? Yeah, as a wise imperialist this American. This fucking. The yellow sponge who wears a fucking tie and little fucking brogues on his feet, who lives next door to a fucking squid and a starfish, right, who works in a burger joint under the fucking sea, he is rubbing his privilege in the face of the fucking people who are forced off the island that the US government <laughs> threw fucking nuclear bombs on. No five-year-old's going to give a fuck about that, are they? <laughs> Professor Barker, fucking you need to reevaluate your fucking life choices, carry you on, guys, fucking carry on, you sad bastard, bitch. <laughs> carry on, fuck guys. Me. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. I'll, tell, I'll, I'll take it over, if you want. She also points out that the cultural appropriation of Pacific culture in SpongeBob SquarePants with Hawaiian style shirts, homes in the shape of pineapples, tiki's, and Easter Island. Oh, do they, do they, have, do they have pineapple houses <laughs> in the fucking Caribbean? And do the sounds of a steel guitar <laughs> perpetuating stereotypes of the region. <laughs> in the article. It's literally <laughs> set like in the fucking sea in the. Uh, in the article, Professor Barker claims that because of these themes, children have become acculturated to an ideology that includes the US character SpongeBob residing on another people's homeland. We should, and she goes on to say, we should be uncomfortable with a hamburger loving American community's occupation of Bikini's Lagoon and the ways that erodes every aspect. Of sovereignty. <laughs> Gaz, would you like to give me your thoughts on that? <laughs> You're going very red. Full gamut. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> one could read that into it. If that's what one wants to look for. You're sounding very calm. The key demographic of Spongebob fucking square pants, as far as I'm aware, are fucking children, and I'm pretty sure it's never once popped into a child's mind that, like, no, is it really suck that Spongebob is American and he lives in Hawaii? Those poor Bikini. Hawaiian victims... Bikini. Bikini, Hawaii, it's all the fucking same. Right? <laughs> 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 fucking hell. No guys are pro pro island people, are pro culture. That was a joke. It's all a bit Hawaii, isn't it? Round there, isn't it? No, that's in Moana. It's all grass skirts and, and hula's, mate. Yeah. Hula dancing. You're welcome. It's from Moana. You, no, don't watch it. I'll tell you what. I'd love to go there. It looks beautiful. What, yeah. Bikini Atoll. No Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Bikini Atoll. <laughs> It's irradiated. <laughs> He's fucking people. So what does she suggest? Well, what she, she's not saying that... Actually, she's not saying... Take it off the air. Take, no, she doesn't say take off the air. And she's not saying that the five-year-olds are thinking that. What she's saying is it's brainwashing the five-year-olds into thinking that taking other people's land and living there is absolutely fine. I can see where Wait, she's coming from. I can see where she's coming no, from. No, you... No. I can't. 
Honestly. There's no natives. Who are the natives in SpongeBob's no. invented universe? Yeah, the and they stole their imaginary land. Well, he, lives, he lives under the fucking sea. He's up. Yeah. Oh, it's all up. made up. That's what she <laughs> fucking. She, she stole it from. They fucking made it up. <laughs> yeah, what I'm gonna say is in our psyche as Westerners. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's the fact that a cartoon was created where the character was American. You know, it was in. Set in, quote, Bikini Atoll, yeah. Bikini Bottom. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, the, the psyche. bottom of the Bikini Atoll. That's just, we don't think anything wrong with that. We just accept it. We, you know, as you say, it's basically, it's... Long-term brainwashing for the kids. Yeah, and it's sort of like... It's okay to displace people and take their land. Well, well what did our generation learn then? That, it, that if, if you fucking throw turtles in mutagen... <laughs> and, and, leave, and leave them in the sewer you know they might well, I think she's reading too much into it of course she fucking this <laughs> yes. fucking silly yes, she's got she got too much time on her this, fucking ass this is, you know we're pretty left leaning guys this is just insane mm. this is like the hard level oh you can't watch Spongebob it's about the fucking yeah, removal of people and they just, they just want to suck no, all no. the fucking joy it's, and it's, Fun out just, of everything. It's just a fucking cartoon. You know, the Ghostbusters is like, oh, well, that's racist to ghosts. You can't watch mm. that. Well, for fuck's sake. Bit, I mean, what were they meant to do? They're meant to make them all speak in the language they speak on Bikini Atoll. It'd well, be even more well, racist, wouldn't it, if they all had really weird accents? Poor, no, no, no. Or well, speak in that, that language, then we wouldn't have yeah, understand it. Then you'd have subtitles. Oh, yeah, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Is that. Then. But that's not going to. I don't want to read a cartoon. That's what I mean. What I mean. SpongeBob, the reason I loved it so much in a, one of my worst depressions when I had the box sets and all that was because it was just so far removed from the real world and everything's fun and light and yeah. dap. And there's a whole other stoner level to it that I love. Yeah. She's uh, all about institutional racism, isn't it? Where oh, it doesn't it's come the white from man, SpongeBob. An American in that. I, I would gonna, I'd see where she's going from, but I'd it's, say it's where the history of slaves and that has more effect yeah, exactly. on the, the psyche. It's mean, fucking than like, it's just a cartoon, you know what I mean? She needs to spend her time well, studying to, something else. What did Bar- it? Professor oh, no. Barker. Barker Mice from Mars is a very anti-capitalist message. Do you remember that? I remember it, but I don't remember the anti-capitalist. Oh, they're always fighting against that fucking greedy capitalist in the mm. top hat who was uh, pillaging the earth for cash, wasn't he? Wow. Well. Because he was an alien. Oh, fuck mm. me, yeah. He was an alien, right? Mm. You come, he'd, they pillaged Mars. Right. Come them three earth. biker mice were the last three biker mice. Mm. And they come to Earth to try and save Earth because mm. they were doing the same to Earth as they did to Mars. But he was a greedy capitalist alien. It all ties together. Can you, oh! can you tell that the only reason that cartoon any others existed was that a lot of executives around the world who were thick thought that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a success because it was a random mix of like things. Do you know what I mean? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh. Mm. Biker mice from Mars. Mm. There was loads... I can't fucking think of any others now, but there was loads that had really stupid long titles. Mm, Jason the Wheeled Warriors? Stuff like that, yeah. There was more like... Oh, fuck, anyway. Yeah. Look, fuck this article, fuck this woman. Uh, Spongebob forever. Viva la Spongebob. You'll never take my Spongebob <laughs> from my cold, dead hands. Sponge. Mike, would you agree that uh, we have triggered Gaz this week? I think you successfully triggered me yes yeah, I, don't yeah, think, I don't yeah. think you need to ask yeah. anyone's opinion I was no, successfully good, triggered good. before I even read the article thank you well, that's good for the per- one nil gets the heart pumping ok so let's um, end the show on our own homemade game show never go full Alex and the object of the game is to see who goes more full Alex Michael finds a couple of random weirdos and then there to a saying random shit <laughs> And then we'll pit them against the arch saint of insanity himself, Alex Jones. And our job is to decide who goes most full Alex. Because it's all right to go a little bit Alex, core Alex, half Alex, three cores Alex on a train, full Alex on a podcast. Mm-hmm. Both of you have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's okay. <laughs> it wasn't okay before, but it is now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we never go full Alex on a live internet stream <laughs> like you two did. <laughs> this isn't live. <laughs> okay. Were you trying to get crazy with this scene? 
Don't you know I'm loco? First up, we've got Brendan Dilly. Is he a newcomer? I know, he's, he's been on it once oh, before. He? Oh, I remember this fucker. He's got, yeah, he's got House Marga. He's got a, a yeah. Game of Thrones style House Marga with a lion head, which is actually the symbol for Carly yeah. Lager on a plaque And he's got a yeah, hockey shirt or something in the background. Trump 45, the 45th president. Oh, you know, God. Even though technically he's a 44th. Technically he is. Well, anyway, was... he's saying Trump must execute his political enemies. Wow. Well, that's impressive. For us to win. I'm going to be honest with you. President Trump, more ambitious than that. Your host, Dilly. Yeah, I'm more ambitious than that. I don't want to just win. I don't just want to take home the, the victory, the W, and then shake hands with the traitors. Hey, good good game. Well done. You guys played well. You guys want to be friends? You want to unify the country? No, that's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to do. I want to win. And I want to win, and I won't consider it total victory without destroying our enemies. I don't want to hold your hand. I want to stomp you into the fucking ground. I want Donald Trump to bury you treasonous pricks under the prison. I don't want to just win. Winning is a formality at this point. Destroying you motherfuckers is way more important. That's why draining the swamp is so critical. I guarantee the swamp's looking and going, what more does he want? He's got the win in 2020. Why is he doing this? He's going to win. We all know it. We're all just running to make money. Why is he still doing this to us? It's because Donald J. Trump is absolutely doing what I was hoping he would do, which is, yeah, I'm not here just for wins. I'm not here just for money. I will consider it a total victory without destroying you entirely. Your entire fucking life. All, everything you've built, I want to ruin it. I won't be done, and this won't be a job well done, and none of us will be satisfied until all of you pricks are gone. Not just gone. Gone like totally gone. Your way of fucking thinking, all the money you stole, all the businesses you built with stolen money, all the fucking constituents and rigged elections and fucking bullshit laws and bullshit trade agreements and bullshit. All of it's got to be gone. There is no room for mercy. This is why the rhinos don't fit. This is why I fucking call the herd around here. Because we don't have any time for weakness. I don't want anybody on this team that wants to lift their foot off the throat of the Democrats right now. None of them. It won't be enough. I want to win in November next year. And I want to keep curb stomping these motherfuckers well beyond that. Because that's what it's going to actually take to win your country. You're not going to just get to win it. You've got to destroy your enemy. You can't just win. The scoreboard's not going to tell the full story. Not only do you have to win the scoreboard, you have to make sure that your enemy can never play the game again. And the only way you do that is with total annihilation of their ideologies, their finances, and everything else. And you gotta lock up all of these treasonous motherfuckers. They all have to go to jail. There's no choice. There is one solution and one solution only to save America. And I think you know what it is. He's gonna say it. Yep. It's a zero sum game. And if you don't have the stomach for it, I don't know what to tell you. He's put up a picture of a noose swaying in the wind. Um, well, that was concerning, wasn't it? Oh, fucking cunt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, he's talking about his neighbours, his co-workers, mm. maybe even parts of his family. Yeah, probably. About Democrat. He wants their ideology removed from this earth. Now, yeah. that is extreme right-wing. <laughs> what are you going to you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's the one that you should call a Nazi and mm. should call a fascist. Can I punch him in the face? No. You're still no. allowed to punch him unless he hits you. That's wrong. No, it's not. It's higher ground, Ben. Well, fuck the higher ground. Mm. You don't understand violence. He wants to execute people, Mike. No, it's all I'm punching the face. is nothing... It's all talk. He, yeah, w- but then... he wants to execute people and remove ideologies. It's all talk. No, it might be all talk, but he's still spouting it. He said that about Hitler, to be fair. Hitler wasn't a fucking bloke in his fucking Uh, laundry room. He was at one point. Yeah, but come on, you know what I mean? This guy represents a small percentage. He was a failed... He was a failed artist, failed painter. He was a corporal. Do you you think this man, this man here, Brendan Dilly, 
is ever going to amass. Right. We live in the world of truth. And st- yes. He's got 13 he he I believe it's possible. Could be as dangerous no, as I Adam. don't, because he's got 1,300 views on this video. No, no, this is a replay of a video. Oh, replay of a video. So I don't know what the original post... But he's the fact is he is speaking to someone out there... Yeah, listen, anyway... Listen. ...who've got guns and ammunition and maybe they're in a militia. And before you know it, that militia has decided, you See, know what? But without going we around in circles, that. the reason you can't punch him in the face is because there's laws against that. If you smack him in the face and then... Fuck him. He's, no, it's not fuck him. Then what, when you get charged with assault, what yeah. have you achieved? Well, I yeah. punched an arsey. There you go. But you fucked your own life over. Like it. Oh. <laughs> it's like Granddad was seven year old. <laughs> Granddad was bayoneting him. Oh, but oh. here we fucking go. <laughs> well, let's move on from Brendan. <laughs> He's a cop. next pastor Pastel. speaking in tongues. Can't I told you about this. That's really, really yeah. fucking amazing. <laughs> you seen it, man? No, I haven't. No. What's this cunt? the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb God. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, healing, healing, healing. I pray, I pray, I pray, deliverance, 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 deliverance. Yes, Lord, 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 yes, Lord. Karamoshara danda rabasha karabamanda didiasa. Uratataratatalamohoshakaya. Yes, Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Let's uh, read off the fucking phone. It's the best bit. Call it me off to think to say now. Is he having, is he having an orgasm? <laughs> has he got some bad news? It's the football score. <laughs> Oh, I had her on that. Oh, <laughs> oh my QA has gone. <laughs> there goes Miyaki. Miyaki. Someone, for fuck's sake, put your phone down. You're screaming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, touch this. Touch this right now. Touch this situation. <laughs> touch this situation. Touch my penis, God. Lord, touch, touch this situation by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the anointing. By the anointing. By the anointing. By the anointing. That was beautiful. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the worst. Guys, you've been an actor. It's unbelievable. You've learned lines. You've the, performed on stage. You don't need to know any of that to be able to read into... He, he, when he wasn't looking at his phone, he was able to do actual words. Mm. Yeah. What was it? Heal, heal, praise, praise, whatever. Yeah, that's all it was, was heal, heal, praise, praise. When he looked at his phone... Touch this, God. Because he had to concentrate <laughs> on words... Yeah. Whether he was reading off his phone, he then lost the ability to say words whilst reading words, so he just switched to fucking noises. Yeah. <laughs> What was it? He and was people are probably paying 50 quid a pop to come and see him. Yeah. Fucking hell. And he can't stop looking at his fucking phone. Right. He's blatantly <laughs> reading it from his phone. Yeah. Michael, just learn your fucking lines. No, I don't think that's happening, Ben. I, th- that man's just tweeting or something. He's literally checking Facebook or the football scores or something. That's why, like... It's because speaking in tongues, you don't need to learn lines for it, does yeah, it? It's just why is he looking memory. at his phone? Because he knows it's bullshit, because he's not actually being channelled by a spirit or God, is he? He's a fucking charlatan who knows this room full of cunts listening to him. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Cheryl's tweeted me. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, retweet, right. retweet. Uh, oh, shit, people are looking. Hobble. Praise this. Absolute, just exposed himself for the complete... You're supposed to be trying to con people. Let's put it in wrestling terms. Put some terms. effort in. Exactly. Yeah. In wrestling terms, you're supposed to be, like, working the people. The idea is you're presenting an illusion that you're being fucking channeled. That's what speaking in tongues is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. As far yeah. as I understand, God, something's coming through you. Yeah. At least try and keep the illusion up. <laughs> yeah. That's the most half-assed job. From any pastor I've ever seen on this show in over a hundred episodes, mm-hmm. and we've had some pretty half-assed fucking pastors on, but that that yeah, was pathetic. That oof, I don't even know if he's a contender. He's just a prick. Right, right. What's next the man up, himself going shock. To Alex Jones joins Bill Gates and the global elites to destroy humanity. 
Okay. Bill Gates and his father, who ran Planned Parenthood, are right. <laughs> we need to dumb down, sterilize, and abort as many people as we can. We need to put as much fluoride in the water of those that are born to dumb them down as much as possible so they're more easily managed. You see, I've decided to try to join Bill Gates and kind of start thinking like him. Worldwide, he directed genetically engineered mosquitoes to bite us and give us diseases. But he said it was in the name of helping people. Just like he funded the projects of these, quote, sterilized male mosquitoes that would go out in Brazil and cause the other mosquito populations to implode. But now they mutated and the numbers exploded. And suddenly the mosquitoes are making people much sicker. Oh, it wasn't a mistake. None of it was. Now, Malaris, of course, transmitted by mosquitoes. And I brought some here. There's no reason only poor people should have, have the experience. <laughs> except 5G, 4G, 3G. It's killing us all. We deserve to die. And don't go to InfoWarsStore.com. Oh, no. Don't get high-quality fish oil or turmeric that fights inflammation. Don't get any of the great antioxidants we have. Don't get ultimate bone broth that's selling out at 50% off. It's the last week to get it. Don't support organizations and institutions that are independent and fighting for a pro-human future. Roll over to Bill and Melinda Gates. The rightful rulers of this earth do not go to InfoWarsStore.com and support me. And do not spread the articles and videos. Just give up and submit. Give your children over to Billy Boy. Truth is, Satan's good. Yeah, that's right. All right, thanks for watching. And thank you, Bill Gates, for all you do. Thanks for those mosquitoes. Thanks for 5G. Thanks for the chemtrails. He had me until he just decided to turn it into an advert. advert. Yeah, but it's Alex, everything's an advert. His entire channel's an advert. But do you know what? I'm sold. Bill Gates, you evil fuck. Oh, I don't know what the fuck bone broth is. Yeah, me too. Well, it's the broth of bones, obviously. Oh, in tablet form. Oh, it's good. Children's bones. He's boiled the Whose bones. Whose bones are dead, they? Um, <laughs> dead soldiers from space. I don't know. Look, hey, man, that, that mosquito thing... They, he did make that sound like a really awesome comic book plot, wouldn't it? It's all mm. in the name of good. And what if Bill is the ultimate? He, because then there's, yeah, a lot of people that think, well, there's a lot of people that think the elites do want to um, wipe out a significant mm. amount of population. We, we touched on it several times on George the show. George Guystones? Yeah, that? Prince Charles. There's quotes from loads of people saying, like, oh, yeah, we could do with a cull. In a flipping kind of way, but are they flipping? Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. we're thinking they're flipping because mm. we, we can't think that anyone would think like that. But uh, the guys in charge are like, hmm. Well, Get too many of these plebs, isn't there? Yeah. Well, a war. Should we recap? It? I think he wins it. I think Brendan Dilly wins it. That was just pure lunacy, and everything he's because everything he's claiming to stand for, democracy and an open government, is exactly what he's just then said. No, but anyone else's ideologies who don't mess your mind, dead. Same for Billy Ben, does it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Mike, he doesn't. Punch him. Now, I think no, this guy. There's a no difference between punching somebody and hanging a mass execution. No, or what about your fantasy, your flights of fantasy when you're ruling the earth? Yeah. And no dissenters are allowed. Mm. You know, I'm doing it for a good start. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be killed, they'll just send to claims camps. Re -educated, so re education <laughs> camps. Oh, oh, that doesn't sound <laughs> Like a fascist wet dream. <laughs> Re-education camps. Resorts. Camps. Resorts. <laughs> Re-education resorts. Just let them live. They will live. Just not to kill anybody. What your utopia doesn't sound utopia. It's gonna be a glorious utopia. Okay, but I actually think that this guy is not as mental as Alex, because all he's on about, really, if you boil it down. It's partisan politics, but he's taking it to the extreme. Fucking crush our enemies. Alex is talking about one of the world's most famous philanthropists is mm. using his bioengineered mosquitoes to spread disease and fluoride in the water to dumb us down so we're more easily controllable. When you phrase so it, it like be that. be a mass population cut. And the one in the middle was checking his phone whilst talking in yeah. tongues. So I actually think... Plus he was doing a really good Joker impression, wasn't he, Alex? Mm. You know, I think Alex might have 
edge this little toss part out. He's a nothing. He's just talking about like fucking partisan politics. What's that in the face of global conspiracies with disease? Oh, you put it like mosquitoes. that. Bill Gates is euthanizing mm. part of the planet, and he's just well, he's just a bigot, isn't he? Yeah, you won me over, guys. I'll go with yeah. Alex. Yeah, good on Alex. I'll, 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 I'll switch. I'll, that was classic Alex. It was classic Alex. First guy is a. He's just a prick, isn't he? He's a bigot. I don't think it's all bluster and all talk. I don't. Let's not go down the rabbit hole. But no, when in the face of an actual Democrat, he's not going to try and hang them or be violent or all. He'd be like, "Hey, bro, it's just an internet show, man. Oh, don't hit me." So fuck him. Anyway, Bang. Now, then you go to prison. Yeah. And then you're the bitch. Mm. Maybe. We all would. Come on, let's face it. Yeah. All three of us say it. Anyway, should we wrap it up on that note? <laughs> <you know? laughs> on that note, we'll all be prison bitches. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, thank you for listening. I've been Ben. Don't join the Flavour Aid and don't join a cult. I've been Gas Free Biff Tannen. Goodbye. I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. Thanks for listening.